Yeah, I believe we were in July. <laughs> Why oh. am I singing? <laughs> Did this become a musical? July, July. In July. One Piece, summer. Unlimited, World Red. <laughs> Okay, Is it I played game? that game. Me too. Did and you... Kyle... Tell us about it, Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle played it as well. Kyle uh, is not here at the moment. But um, I, I liked it. I'm glad I picked it up. I didn't finish it just because other stuff was coming out. Uh, but not it's... according to the list. <laughs> <laughs> well, well it's, it was, I was... I didn't get it in July. I got it a little bit after that. Um... <laughs> But I, Josh, why don't you go first? Because I kind of want to say some things I don't like about it. Okay. Um, that seems to be all we've been doing with this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this game was really good, except for all these parts, which sucked. The cutscene, I did notice on in, I got the 3DS version. I don't know if you got the Wii U one. Uh, I, okay, I, see, I played it on the Wii U, yeah. Okay. Um, on the 3DS, I noticed the cutscenes were glitchy like they would um half the screen would cut out some of the oh, time screen tearing yeah on the I 3ds could... though that's weird yeah that is strange i cannot say i encountered that problem on the wii u mm. um i i liked it it was a cool beat em up and you know i generally like games like that <laughs> um i don't really remember the story although the characters they invented were kind of stupid <laughs> The, but there's a Tanuki that's a pen. Yeah. That's kind of dumb, but also kind of cool. Um, it kind of bugged me that, like, the way they had it named, Unlimited World Red, made you seem made it seem like there was going to be a second version, and I blame it solely on Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it is kind of a strange, like, name. There's two versions of the game, though. There are, but... They're the same game. It's still yeah. Unlimited World Red. <laughs> They're both called Unlimited World Red. Yeah, yeah that's, I, that's that was confusing for me. I was like, why isn't it called Unlimited World Blue? For the Wii U. <laughs> it's it's just the guy's name. That's that's <laughs> his name is Unlimited World. <laughs> oh, yes, his name is Red. <clears throat> like Red, well, that's his name. It's Red uh, Furred, Rump. something like that. Red. What does it have to do with the Unlimited World? Uh, well, it's unlimited because that's the series. Like there was unlimited adventure, unlimited cruise. Oh, and this is the so third it's one. One Piece Unlimited World Red. Basically, it's still a weird name for it. But um, I okay. So we didn't get unlimited cruise, uh, which there were two of. It was like a two-part game. Uh, we didn't get either of them in the. North America. In the North America. In the North Americas. Europe, uh, get it? <clears throat> Europe did get it, but it was, uh, they didn't, like, stub it, which is the same thing they did with this game. They just, you know, it's <coughs> they kept the Japanese voice acting and everything. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyway, I played Unlimited Adventure on the Wii, and I really, really liked it. Um, I didn't at first, but I went back, like, years later and played it and enjoyed it a lot. Um, and playing this one on the Wii U, the thing that I. I, I can't count it as a mark against the game because it was originally a 3DS game. You know, the Wii U version is a port. And, like, because it was a 3DS game, you can only have... You make, like, a party of three characters. And, like, that when you go to a stage, it's like you can switch between whatever characters you brought with you. Which I get because you can't have nine Straw Hats loaded into memory on the 3DS. You just can't do it. You know, I get it. Um, but I didn't find it as fun as in Unlimited Adventure where you could switch between any... There were only eight at the time, but you could just switch between whoever you want at any time. I, f I thought that was really cool. Um, and again, it's not bad. It's not a flaw. It's just... It's not... I didn't prefer it. And uh, the last thing I want to say is that what I really liked about Unlimited Adventure is that, like, all the areas that you explored of this island... Like, you were on this island, but all the areas were vastly different. And they were all brand new. And it really tapped into, like, when you're reading or watching One Piece and they go to a new island and you get to, like, explore it. And I just thought that was really cool. And uh, in this game, all the locations are, like, from One Piece. Like, you go to locations that these characters have visited. Um, 
And like that's cool too to explore those, but it just lost for me a little bit of that sort of charm of like, you know, you you in Unlimited Adventure, you really felt like you were on the crew, like exploring this new place. You were like, wow, what's you know, what are we gonna find? And in this game, you're just like, hey, it's it's Alabasta. I remember that place. Hey, it's Annie's lobby. You know, which is not bad. I just I didn't prefer it. Right, and like what's confusing to me at least, I, I don't follow the manga, um, and I know the anime is definitely not this far. But uh, the first place they start you out in is like late in the series. I don't even know if that's translated yet. It They're is. not translated. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, like it's past on Hazard already, but it is kind of crazy that yeah, like the 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 first area of the game was like probably the most recent one at the time it was made. Mm-hmm. So I guess maybe that's why. But it is kind of weird that you're like... Like if you haven't kept up with One Piece for a while, you're going to be kind of lost because there's all these characters and locations you haven't been to yet. But... It makes it fresh. Yeah, again, like... I can't... <laughs> clean, clean. That's, not, that's not a flaw. It's just something that I noticed. But I don't want to spend too much time on uh, One, One Piece. One Piece, yeah. Because I haven't even finished it. But I enjoyed it. Yeah, that's that's cool. Would you recommend the anime? Never mind. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that another day. Yeah. All right. Yeah. No, I'm just joking. We were having a conversation about One Piece literally right before we started recording this. Um, yeah. But uh, let's move on to the next game, um, which is Lethal League, and I'm pretty sure Don's the only one that's played that. So talk about that, Don. Well, Phil's also played it. Phil's not Phil's here. Phil's not here. Yeah, Phil's not here. <laughs> Well, guess we're not going to talk about it. All right, moving on. Uh, uh, okay. August. Uh, hold on. Uh, 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 uh. Relax, he's not actually moving on. Yeah. <laughs> Lethal League is pretty fucking cool, man. Like, I was um, I was pretty excited for it. Um, it first started off as, like, some Flash game. I don't even know. It was, like, some ga- like free, like, game online. Uh... And then it was like featured at uh, UFGT Ultimate Fighting Game Tournament as like the final mystery game, and it sort of picked up from there uh, and became like a real game. Like after they saw that uh, how I don't know fun it could be, like the developers like watching what people were doing with the like. The little alpha de- a demo, mm-hmm. they decided to make like a full on game with it. Um, and it's like it's a, it's an indie game, so it's like a little bit light on content. Um, well, it's, but it's it, like a mi- gone. It's it's meant to. It's sort of like I, I don't know that I would call it a fighting game, but it's more like you're meant to play it with other people. Is where the fun yeah. is, you know? <laughs> yeah, like Nidhogg. Yeah, <laughs> that game we can't talk about anymore because it came out in January. <sighs> Even though we played it, played it last night. Show. Yeah, <laughs> we played it. We played it this year, Ricky. We played get over it. it. Get over it. <laughs> Talk about Lethal League. We're on Lethal League. Anyway, Lethal League's like a mix of um, Smash Bros. Uh, and Pong. I think that's a good way to describe it. Yeah, with not the, having played it. <laughs> with, with the style of Jet Set Radio, it does have a very like urban Japan yeah. sort of it does have that vibe totally yeah there's, and, there's like, like graffiti the in the Japan. background and stuff the music's really fucking rad like if you don't play the game at least listen to the music because it's super sick um it's just a lot of fun I played it with Phil quite a few times um, yeah I, I watched you and Phil play it on stream and it looked like a pretty fun time yeah it's like the whole premise of the game basically is there's just like this ball, like it's a baseball or something like that, and you hit the ball. Uh, you're in it, like a box. Like, yeah, yeah, you're, you're you're like in a box, kind of like a like a 2D fighting game, uh, and like you hit the ball, and then like after you hit the ball, it'll like gain some speed, and if you hit the opponent, then you score a point or something like that, or you take away their stock with the ball, not yeah, you can with just like hit them yourself, yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, yeah. You can't just like run up to your opponent and hit hit them with your bat or 
fight him as the gator guy. Um, and they they have quite a, like a couple characters. I want to say like eight. I don't know. Not, I I don't know off the top of my head. There's there's only there's only a few characters, and there's only a few stages. Um, but it's like like I said, it's an indie game, so it's it's a little light on content. There is like a single player mode, uh, which is pretty hard. I never actually got to the boss. Uh, Cause I always get bullshitted out by <laughs> like the clone guy. <laughs> I think like the second to last one is like supposed to be your clone or something. I forget. Okay. It's been a while since I played Lethal League. Like July, July even. July. Wow. Almost like yeah. Yeah. in July. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But anyway, you hit the ball into your opponent and they die. Uh, but then also they can hit it back. And so, like, it's just like a back and forth thing, like ramping up speed on the ball. Uh, but then you got some like other tricks you can do, like you can uh, punt it, or is it bunt it? I don't bunt. know. It's bunt. bunt. Okay, yeah, bunt. Punting is a different sport. Yeah, that's right. Okay, <laughs> you you can bunt it, and then like it'll have like a different property. It'll like sort slow of slow down. Yeah, it'll slow down, but then like. Uh, you'll get more meter if you hit it again. You'll get two instead of one. Um, and also, it's a good way to, like, yeah, slow down a ball. Like, that's going, like, a million miles per hour and shit. It's just, like, a lot of fun. It's really extreme. Um, you can play it four players. Uh, the online is actually pretty good. Like, the online net play. It's probably better than NetHog. NetHog kind of sucks. In terms of online, there's a little input delay, but... It, uh, for Lethal League, I felt like there was there was no input delay really when I was playing from frickin' Texas to the UK. That so, is impressive. Yeah, and it uses GGPO, I believe, and that's um, regarded as like really good netcode. Sure. Yeah, that's Lethal nice. League. Check it out. Uh, it's right probably on. on sale right now. It probably is. This fucking <laughs> winter sale's going on. But will it be going on when this goes up? <laughs> Doubtful. Yeah. Well, it's, these videos are easy to edit. I don't fucking like put any footage or anything. It's All a right. podcast. Just listen to it. People love oh, that. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Sam is sick of clothes off. Speaking God, of. Yeah. yeah let's talk. Let's <laughs> fucking talk about indie indie games. Uh, Speaking of yeah. indie games that people love. Yeah, we're moving on to August. The next game is Five Nights at Freddy's, and I have not Ooh. seen a game take the internet by storm in quite the way that that one did <laughs> in a long time. Oh uh, my god, dude. Yeah, it was famous like the day it came out. It was ridiculous. Uh, talk People about that. this game. Talk about it, Jess, because you're the only one who's played it. I am the only one among, uh, among us who's played it, that's for sure. Um, a lot of people have seen me fangirl. Like, if you follow me on Twitter or Tumblr, you've seen how much I love this game. Like, you've seen me sing its praises. And I, I love the hell out of it. It was just, like, to me, it was just so unique and, and fun in a lot of ways. And, like, one of the things I love the most about it is that animatronics are surprisingly underutilized in the horror genre. And seeing them being used was kind of like, oh, well, duh. Yeah, that's a great idea. Because... A lot of kids are creeped out by animatronics, and our generation in particular, like, we... Oh, no. Huh? What? Uh, you, st you, you lagged for a second. Uh, keep saying what you were saying. Oh, I'm sorry. Where, what did I, where did I cut out? You said... You said we... <laughs> You said, and like, <laughs> you said a lot of... Oh, like, we, we grew like we grew up on animatronics. So, like, you know, our, yeah. you know the Chuck E. Cheese thing. And, you know, there, there are a couple of things that sit off the note button for me already when it comes to horror games. You know, dolls, ventriloquists, puppets, statues, stuff like that. And after playing this, I was like, oh, great. Now i got to add animatronics to the list. So, yeah. here... There's, there is something <laughs> inherently creepy about... I don't know what it is. They just yeah. freak me out. They never did when I was a kid, but the more I got older, they just were like they set off some kind of creep factor. Anyway, your your character is a new night watchman at this pizzeria, Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. And on your first night, there's a dude who will leave you pre-recorded messages, and he tells you that the animatronics in the building will because you're still because you're still there after closing not recognize you as a person, but as a metal endoskeleton without its costume. And because of that, they want to force you inside of an animal, of an animatronic costume, uh, which will kill you in the process. So there's your motivation for keeping them away. <laughs> and the, the gameplay is fairly simple. You, you stay in one place. You're not allowed to move. 
you can move the camera from side to side to look through the doors on either side of your office. There are buttons you can use to close the doors and to turn on lights so you can see. Um, and you can keep an eye on the animatronics using a monitor, uh, which is activated when you move the mouse uh, down to the bottom of the screen. Uh, the animatronics will move around the building and try to get into your office. And if one of them does, of course, you die. And you die by jump scare. And this kind of, like, set off a couple of, like, turned a couple of people off from the game because jump scares are so incredibly grossly overused. I get that. The thing, to me, that makes it so scary is not the jump scares, it's the build-up. It's the anticipation. You are completely on your own, watching them, like, steadily get closer and closer to where you are, and there is fuck all you can do about it. There's nothing you can do but wait for them to come to you. You can't leave for very obvious reasons, seeing as they're walking around outside, and you can't defend yourself aside from closing the doors to your office when they get too, uh, when they get too close. And no, you can't leave the door closed, doors closed rather, because it drains power from the building like crazy. Yeah, Once the power yeah. is out, of course, you are, unless you are on the last few seconds of your shift, Freddy will kill you. And from night three onward, if Freddy is left on watch, he will also try to very quickly get into your office and kill you. There is uh, an area called Pirate's Cove that you have to watch very frequently because if the character there, who's called Foxy, is left on watch for too long, he makes a mad dash to your office and kills you. So Foxy and Freddy were clearly meant to kill the campers, which I think is a pretty good idea because otherwise it would have been too easy to just sit there and wait for and wait the nights out otherwise so they had a, a pretty good system set up there um yeah yeah i, I just i really sorry, feel like i really feel like foxy is like the breakout star of the game oh he like he garnered he garnered a lot of fans and you know people people love him they love him and they love to hate him of course because you know if you're not watching him that's it. You're you're done. And once you beat the game, there's a bonus six night with higher difficulty. If you beat that, there's a custom night, which allows you to set the AI of the animatronics. So there's some replay value there as well. Um, the story's sort of bare bones, um, which is fine. You know, I've personally never cared too, too much about story in games. But, you know, it's just a nice, like, icing on the cake. I do kind of like, however, that there's a lot of, like, hidden details there. So... Um, and this is especially prevalent in Five Nights at Freddy's 2, which I won't get into just yet. But um, the gameplay itself, like, there's if there's one negative thing I could say about it... Whoa, what the... Whoa! <laughs> oh, everything alright? Freddy got her! No! <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> ah! no. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, shit. Freddy! <laughs> I'm only hearing static. Ah! Uh, oh my so. god! <laughs> she's oh my god! Are you back? Oh, she's in and out like every second. That Just like Freddy! <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> oh no! <laughs> um, so are we yeah, terrible nice talking nice about that? Me. I just want to ask why would they program the robots like that? It's oh, a he's video out of his costume. Game. It's a video so game. So we murder them by it's putting a video, them. video okay. game, Josh. Do you, do you think? It, yeah. Do you think uh, Buzz Lightyear was programmed to uh, to be an idiot? Well, I mean, I've heard I've heard it argued a lot with like Toy Story in particular. If Buzz Lightyear thinks he's a spaceman, like why does he still freeze up when like Andy's in the room? Okay. That was weird. I am very sorry. I'm not quite sure what happened, but all of a sudden the call erupted into static for me. Uh, that's that's weird. So we, uh, we were scared. We thought Freddy got, got you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, maybe you should just edit the jingle in there. Like, if I can send you a sound file for the jingle. <laughs> um, well, but basically, what I asked the guys was, why would they program the animatronics to like put them, put other animatronics back in their costumes? <laughs> they, you know what? That's, um, that's a result of. Uh, that's not actually what it is. The 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 story, as you kind of dig deeper for details, uh, it's actually revealed that these animatronics are haunted, and the, what they're doing is not like, you know, they're not trying oh. to like help you get into a suit at all. There is nothing accidental about your death. So, <laughs> so it's that the animatronics are haunted. They're, so it's exactly yes. like fucking oh. Zeus and the Real Girl. It kind yeah, of. Yeah, but is. This, this this yeah, but 
<laughs> that episode was being made like way before right the game came <laughs> out, and I'm sure the game was being made at the same yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. Right. Video game it takes forever to. I really like the fact that like the the fucking like other security guard dude who leaves you messages is just like, oh yeah, these animatronics come to life yeah. at night. No big deal. <laughs> He's MVP. so fucking MVP. Wise about it. <laughs> It's hilarious. I love that there's so much dark humor in this game, and I absolutely love it. Um, I was gonna say like before I cut out, like if there's one negative thing I could say, it's that the gameplay itself can get tedious after a while, and it does kind of get predictable. And I've heard, I've no, I don't know what. Specific, what the specifics are, but I have heard that some people have found ways to camp their ways past some nights. Um, uh, I don't know how off the top of my head. Shut up, uh, Matt. <laughs> I, I, I knew it was coming. So I was, what? Shut up, Matt. Some nights. <laughs> 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 But despite that, I really like it. I think it's a great horror game. I think it's very creative. Um, yeah, that's about all I've got to say about it, really. Um, it's just fun. It's different, it's unique, it's fun. Yeah, it's it's not really my kind of game, but I definitely admire it. It seems like a lot of thought went into, um, you know, you said the story is kind of bare bones, but mm -hmm. it seems like a lot of thought went into, like, the the setting of this pizzeria and these old oh. decrepit, you know, animatronics. And I, I think that's super neat. Oh yeah. And I said before, like, I love that, you know, despite how kind of bare bones it is, I do love how there are hidden details to the story. And you yeah. know, the more you find, the more is revealed to you. Like I've always admired that as, as a, as a concept. So I think that's, I think it's, I think it's very well utilized with this story uh, and with the story with the next game, which I'll get into later. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was clearly a passion project of the creator, and I just, yeah, like, yeah. It, I, I don't like horror games. I especially don't like horror, <laughs> horror games about creepy living animatronics or dolls or <laughs> puppets, things of that nature. But like, I, I, I wouldn't play this game myself. But I always appreciate when an indie game like gets to be it's pretty popular. Success. Yeah, 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 exactly. Oh, yeah. Because there's so many indie games <laughs> these days, and so many people put a lot of effort into games that just go unnoticed. And this mm -hmm. one, like, it was a breakout hit. One of the biggest breakout hits, I think, of this year. Uh, it really terms, was. Like, it, in terms of, like, got, new IPs. Oh, yeah. It got surprisingly, like, it was it was so loved. And, like, I, I love that, uh, that, you know, Scott Cawthon got so much, like, success for this game it just makes me happy when an indie game gets that much recommendation and that mu or recognition rather same thing i guess yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah. it's 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 just so cool i, I yeah. love that uh i love it when this happens and the fact that this happens so quickly is just awesome to me i just think that's astonishing but uh yeah i don't want to go i don't want to gush too much about this because i can go on and on and on so <laughs> let's <laughs> let's move on <laughs> I I am I'm not complaining about that. <laughs> I uh you'll get part two later. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And let's see what's next. We have Azure, Azure Striker Gunvolt. Yeah. I don't... Interesting. That's one of yeah, us played that. Yeah. I didn't, <laughs> I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't play it. I kind of wanted to play it. I wanted to Sorry. like I wanted to like buy it and like get Mighty Gunvolt for free. Honestly, that was the main yeah. reason I wanted it, and then I never bought it. But like I guess Mighty Gunvolt's like released separately now, or it's going yeah, to be. You, you could buy it separate. You buy it oh, for like two bucks, so it's like why would I buy the other one now? Is it two bucks? I thought it was five. Whatever, I'll buy it separately. I think it's five, which uh -huh. is a little much, but we'll talk about that well, next. They're adding Go. like DLC. Tell us about Azure Striker Gunvolt, Josh. Well, basically, it's like this Mega Man game. You're going around shooting bad guys. Jumping right. a shooting. So Jumping a, a shooting man. Um, but there's a twist to it, which I guess is kind of like the game that's also referenced in Mighty Gunvolt. Um, Mighty Number no. 9. But uh, the difference is like to sh when you're shooting people or things or what, robots, whatever the hell you're trying to kill um the bullets aren't the main way you kill them instead uh you have to use this like charge because you have psychic powers that give you electricity or something like a dash <laughs> attack no you don't dash through them, <laughs> it's so it's like day. it's okay. different in that okay. sense okay but basically you're shooting and then you're using this major attack to kill the things to kill all the things all right um it's fun. It's cool. uh, I would rather it just be you know shoot things and kill them. But I th I like the twist they put on it. Uh, it looks pretty. 
because of how well it's sprited. Um, the story's kind of eh, but you know what do you want? We you we like we keep mentioning Mighty Number no. Nine and stuff like that. Uh, it's worth mentioning that the studio behind this is NT Creates. Right. Mm-hmm. People that did Mega Man Zero, Mega Man Nine, Ten. Mega Man Ten, um, and are working on Mighty Number no. Nine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice. That's why it's that's why it's similar. Yeah. Yeah. But as uh, from what I can tell, uh, I believe they started making uh, Zerg Striker Gunvolt before I think Mighty so Number too. Nine was even a thing. Yeah, I, I think so too. Probably one of them's done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> well, when you put it like that. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> But I mean, like other than that, there's not much to say about it. It's it's a good game. The final boss is hard as shit because uh, it's it doesn't. All right, what makes it hard is that like it pushes you off the stage. It doesn't. It's not that it hurts you, and that the final part of it is like there's this meteor coming down and you have to destroy it before, or you have to destroy the thing before the meteor hits, which destroys the meteor. And it's just a, it's so much of a pain in the ass that, like, I gave up for a week. <laughs> oh, yikes. <laughs> I'm like, fuck it. Can't do it. And then I did it. The next time I played it, I'm like, that wasn't hard at all. all right. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes you need to do that. Yeah, sometimes you need some space, and then you come back and you get it in the first try. Yeah, that happens all the time, man. That yeah. happens all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I want to check that game out. Uh, there's some interesting, like, uh, Japanese English differences. Like, I was yeah, just like the character. Yeah, like, I was just gonna bring that up. Somebody, How do you guys feel about like uh, the they, kid rift? They like censored, if you want to call it that. The main character is like showing his belly button and has a ponytail, uh, and like in the North American version, they were like, "No, can't do that." Got to be. And then they, they they also changed their mind about the ponytail. I yeah, they ended up going like, back on the ponytail. I think because so many people were like pissed off about it. Like, yeah, yeah, man. That was a huge part cool. of the character. Like, that's yeah. pretty silly, too. Yeah. Like, I guess I guess Americans weren't gonna buy it because the ponytails are girly. I don't understand the logic. Yeah. Like, I think maybe that's what they thought the midriff was too. But I don't know. That was dumb. It was a. It was yeah, dumb. Like, I should just so... left the character the way it was. Yeah, yeah. but yeah. It, I understand why people feel like it's it's a very Japanese thing to just like have your. Stomach Stomach showing. Mid, yeah, midsection revealed. Yeah, as okay. a male. Have your gut showing. Yeah. It reminds me of like uh, the like Samurai Legend Musashi game, which kind of sucks, but uh, he had the same like you know exposed belly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I just think it had something to do with like. Um... <laughs> Anime characters already look like female, feminine enough, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, I mean, like, that's kind of confused a... a lot, and they were like, eh, let's try and. I don't want to say butch him up, because that would be offensive, but like make him stand out more that he's a guy. I mean, I that, is, that is kind of a thing over there, like the sort of pretty male characters, like Cloud. And Marth. That's just sick. And Marth. Yeah. And yeah. Lucina. <laughs> And uh, I like the, <laughs> no, I like man's a real man. Yeah. <laughs> He's a man. Definitely man. now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you know, I I I'm totally against just like arbitrary stuff like that. Like angry Kirby eyebrows, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's, I love it's angry silly. Kirby eyebrows. Yeah, now. like I don't think it's censorship. I think it's just they wanted to make it different. To yeah, like, yeah. I mean, I I agree. Like I I don't necessarily think I would put it under the censorship umbrella. It's more... Yeah, I'm sure nobody like, told them to change that. It, it's more, you know, trying to make it more palatable to an American audience. I just I just think that uh, that much is unnecessary, you know. Yeah. this It's gonna be... This is like a, an anime, like, run and gun. It's gonna be kind of a niche audience anyway. Yeah, I so. agree. So, like, yeah, you don't really need to change it. So. Yeah, like, the people who were going to buy this game were going to buy it whether he was showing his belly button or not. So. <laughs> well, little Jimmy wasn't going to be like, why is his belly button showing? Little Johnny, get it right. Game. Whatever. Little, little, little <laughs> Jimmy doesn't like little anime games. Jimmy's Johnny's twin brother. <laughs> there. Oh. Johnny does like anime games. Oh, okay. All right. <sighs> little, jo- little Johnny would have played One Piece. 
Okay. All right. What about Mighty Gunvolt? It's all right. It's not I played that great. one. I thought it was a lot of fun. I got it for free because I contributed to Mighty Number no. 9's campaign. I don't think it's worth five bucks because it's just five short levels and mm-hmm. five bosses. Um, and, like, it's fun. Like, if it was, like, two bucks, I would say, you know, get it. But five is a little, like, there's just not, the, the content is just not there to justify that. You know, you can beat it as every character in, like, an hour. Um, but, you know, I had fun with it. It's a fun little Mega Man game. It's even 8-bit, and it's got Beck from Mighty Number no. 9 in it. Mm. Yeah, that was the and idea. It had that other in... gal, girl, gun, gal gun girl or whatever. Oh, uh, out here? No. no. What's that? What's, uh, a freaking game. Hold the up. old gun vault. Mighty gun vault. He's Is it gal gun? I don't even know. I'm trying to look it up. Okay. But it's, it's taking it's taking forever. Gal gun? Ik- Ikoru from Gal, yeah, a... gal Star Gun. Yeah, yeah. Gal Star Gal Star Gun. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I just Gal. Don't know what her name is. Gal Gun is like a very, cool. like, very Japanese thing. Very Japanese, very sexualized silliness. But <laughs> Mighty Gun Vault is a fun little cute time. So oh, cute time. It should have been called Mighty Gal Gun Vault. And and like Josh was saying about, it, he thinks he would prefer just shooting stuff and taking damage from that stuff. That's what it is. That's what it is in Mighty Gunvolt, yeah. Yeah, nice. It's, it's back. Well, okay, but I'm pretty sure it's. Di- uh, I haven't played it since it came out, but I'm pretty sure it's different for uh, what's his name? The other two characters. Azure Striker Gunvolt. It's still. His name? I had. I think. Whoa. I think uh, his name. What is an Azure? I... I mean, Gunvolt is like his code name. I don't Azure remember. Is, that's a color. It means blue. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Uh, Name is Azure. Azure. What is it? What is it like? What language is that? Azure. Yeah. English. Yeah, I feel sure. like it's, English. Is... it's like the light blue colored Yoshi. That's what they call that. I thought that yeah. was cyan. You're Let's... cyan. <laughs> it's it's it... <laughs> it's you a know variation of blue like... that is often described as the color of the sky on a clear summer's day. All right. Yeah. Oh man. Thanks, Wikipedia. <laughs> All right. Okay. I know this isn't on the list, but uh, Rick, do you want to talk about Mighty Number no. Nine's like demo real quick? Um. Oh, sure. This year, and I yeah. played it. Um, I was, you know, the, the, after what I saw in the demo, I'm looking forward to it. I think it was a cool little Mega Man type game. Uh, like I was expressing confusion about earlier it's kind of similar to Gunvolt in how you you shoot stuff and it stuns it and then you have to dash into him to kill it um, and it's a fun little twist on the you know Mega Man type of gameplay um, and there was a boss in it that was really really hard that I don't know if I ever beat and there were some glitches in it that I found because <laughs> it's a demo and the game's not Beta. done yeah um I that. I thought it was promising, you know. I I'm excited for Mighty Number no. Nine, even though I'm not sure what the hell they're doing with like all these. There's been like four Kickstarters for DLC, like other shit. Even though they made a million huh. billion dollars in the first Kickstarter alone, yeah. <laughs> they're like making that's, a TV show or some bullshit yeah, like that. that. That's that's kind of <laughs> super shady, and I don't really so much <laughs> like that. But you know, I'm looking forward to playing the game. I contributed to the Kickstarter, and I'm looking forward to playing the game. I just said that. I'm pretty sure Tim Schafer also was asking for more monies with uh, the Broken Age. Yeah, Broken Age. I think. Broken yeah. yeah. What's Broken Age? Is that Double Fine Adventure? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, the... They released part one earlier this year, and part two is uh, TBA whenever they feel like it. Yeah, whenever they get more money from people. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. It's... I understand that it costs a lot of money to make games, but like, who wanted, like, their... <sighs> whatever. The mighty, the mighty number nine thing just is kind of. I think it's a little weird and shady, but whatever. And but you get to play as Proto Zero. Sure. And kind of. <laughs> <soul. laughs> I, right. I enjoyed the demo. That's that's it. All right, let's move on to the next game on our list, which is I think a crossover nobody asked for, but uh, whew, what a what a what a crossover, uh, Professor Layton. Are you kidding me? Are you Ace kidding Terry. me? I it's... asked for Professor Layton versus Ace Attorney. Oh, you, yeah. Did you play it? 
No, I didn't play. Then you didn't ask for it. <laughs> I asked for it though. I think <laughs> I did too. And All right, well, was would be badass. We'll talk about yeah. it. Ricky. Why, are, why is it versus? I'm pretty sure they're on the same side. The crossover is. <laughs> There is a versus element in the game if you played it. But anyway, uh, I loved that game. I absolutely adored it. It was pretty much exactly what I wanted uh, going into it. You know, my expectations, like it really delivered. Uh, the only like minor complaint I have is that it's a little, and this isn't a bad thing, but I think for a crossover like this, it should have been a little bit more equal. And it's a, it seems like a little tiny bit, more heavily geared towards Layton uh, because it is by level 5 so like that's fine you know they know how to make Layton games but like even like it, you start the game like in London in Layton's universe and uh, there are other Layton characters besides Layton and Luke like uh, the inspector Chumley and his little his little buddy you know and the only Phoenix Wright characters in the game Besides a tiny cameo in the end credits, are Phoenix and Maya. So it's like, and we never see like Phoenix's world. You know, we never see Japanifornia or anything like that. So it's it seems a little bit, you know, not a lot, but a little bit more geared towards late fans, which I understand again. But it's a great, great game. Um, it's got everything. You know, it's got puzzles. It's got really fun cross-examination segments with, like, a new gimmick where you... Like, the trials sections, because you're in this, like, storybook town, so the trials are witch trials. Um, it's in, like, this fantasy setting, you know? And uh, you have to cross-examine, like, several people at once, and you can find contradictions, not just to the evidence, but to somebody else's testimony, like, and you can go back and forth between witnesses, and there's new voice samples of Phoenix going, hold on! <laughs> and, uh, it's, it's a lot of fun, and it gets really crazy, like, you know, at first there's, like, four people, and then, you know, you get, like, five, but the last trial has one with 12 people, and you have to, like, you know, listen to all their like they they each have like something to say and you got to go back and listen to like they react like other people in the gallery will react if somebody says something that they don't think sounds right and that's when you go over and ask them like what's wrong you know um and it's a really interesting fun twist on like the Phoenix Wright games uh it's it's you know that's definitely something I didn't know I wanted like I would have been totally happy with just the regular cross examinations that I already love, but that they did this cool new thing, I think is really fun. Um, and the story's pretty great. It's got that same sort of like all the latent games do this where there's some kind of supernatural fantasy elements going on that turns out to have a very convoluted scientific rational explanation. And, uh, they do the same thing in this game. So that's great. Uh, there were a lot of, though, right? What's that? Ain't nobody dead though, right? Well, play the game and find out. Oh, okay. I will say for, they for like Ace Attorney. It's like, dead. oh, this guy's dead. This guy's dead. This guy's dead. This guy's dead. Yeah. Oh, no, I mean there are murder trials. <laughs> like the trials are, you know, pe people die, but you'll uh, okay. see. You'll see how it works out. But like, they they took Luke's dead. <laughs> yeah, Luke's <laughs> no, dead, man. Yes. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> they they took just some. Some big risks, I think. You know, they didn't like kill anybody off because that would be horrible. But there's some stuff that they do to these characters that you love, where I was kind of like, "Holy shit!" <laughs> you know, um, which I I love that it could do that. And uh, I abs if you're a fan of Ace Attorney or Professor Layton, I would absolutely recommend it. Um, you don't need to know really much of anything about like if you've never played a latent game you've only played the ace attorney games you know you'll be able to keep up they don't there's not a lot of like latent lore that you need to know and and vice versa there's not you don't if you've never played an ace attorney game you know you can still keep up just fine um it does you know it does have the latent puzzles which i i've said before talking about azran legacy like the latent games because if you're not into puzzles then you might not enjoy those games you know and the same is true here. Like, the puzzles are a big part of it. But I think that the trial segments are fun and engaging enough that uh, even if you might not like a full latent game, you'll be willing to sit through the puzzles to get to the Ace Attorney segments. 
Um, and I just thought it was really good. I played it before Azran Legacy, actually, because like, I I bought it the day it came out because I wanted this crossover so bad. Um, and I thought it was great. That's pretty much all I got to say about it. All right, I got a question. Yo. Uh, what do you like more? The sort of the latent investigation segments or the trials? Um, probably the trials. Yeah, I asked that same question to my friend who played it. I mean, she was just like trials, hands down. Yeah, like I mean, that's where the it's where the action happens. It is like even in the Phoenix Wright games, I prefer the court segments to the investigations. You know, pretty much what they did here is instead of Phoenix Wright like investigation phases, you do a chapter of like a Layton game. You know, yeah, uh, which I think is, for my money, a, a bit of a step up from the Ace attorneys. The Ace Attorney investigation phases. Yeah, like I I think it does a little more to keep you engaged when you're like finding hit coins and solving puzzles and stuff. Like um I, I liked that <laughs> that way of going about it quite a bit. But I the trials, like you said, are definitely where the action is. Like that's where the holy shit moments happen. Do you ever find a hit coin in a guy's dead body? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you don't. Um I have a question. Sure. Do, does Leighton explain away <laughs> Phoenix Wright's Cyclops or anything like that? No. Because that game is full of supernatural stuff, too. <laughs> it is, yeah. And they they do have some fun with um, these two worlds colliding, you know. Like, Leighton and Luke, like, when Maya tells them that she's a spirit medium, they're kind of like, huh. But, oh, the, well, another complaint I have about the game is they do this kind of weird thing where... Like it's in this storybook setting, right? So they all the four characters get sucked into this book. But what's weird is that Leighton and Luke like keep their memories, and Phoenix and Maya don't. Mm-hmm. And like if, as the game goes on, you know, they've been pretty quickly like Phoenix and Maya figure out what's going on and who they really are and all that stuff. But when they first, when these two minds first meet like the first time in the game that Leighton and Phoenix are sharing the screen Phoenix has like no clue that he's a lawyer he's like I'm a baker I've lived in this town my whole life and like it's a really funny scene but it just seems so like wrong that that's the first time these characters meet you know and it's like not like it's a it's a social commentary on Capcom reality you know like they just bake out games Instantly, and uh, they forget their roots, you know, like Mega Man never make 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 game. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure Level Five was really into like just kind of backhand insulting Capcom while using their own characters. Yeah, I'm sure. It's just I just thought that was really strange. Like if they met beforehand, like in London, and then got sucked into the storybook and then had that scene where they forgot each other or whatever, it would have been fine. But as it was, I just thought it was really strange. Um, oh, another thing I thought was really strange. Sorry, I want to move on, but I just want to get this out. It took forever. Like, the game came out in Europe, and it took forever to come out in North America, even though they didn't change anything. <laughs> they didn't, like, every all the words still have the English spellings. You know, they got all the U's in there and stuff. Um, color. Color. And... Color. And they didn't. They didn't drag. Uh, what's his name? Phoenix's voice actor from Dual Destinies, who's awesome. They didn't drag him into the recording booth to like do over Phoenix's weird European voice. They just kept everything the same. And I'm, I'm, I'm like, what took so long? You didn't change anything. So, I'm, I'm. Don't get me wrong. I'm thrilled that I finally got to play it. I just thought that was kind of a head scratcher there. Uh, all right, let's. Um... No, hold on. One last thing. Um, <laughs> speaking of like, since you brought up Dual Destinies, like, since the game, like, like Phoenix Wright versus or Professor Layton versus Ace Attorney, since that game like took so long, mm-hmm. um, we saw that like footage of that game first. Oh uh, yeah. And like seeing like Nick in a 3D model was like it was cool, and then like Nint- oh, not Nintendo, Capcom was like. Hey, check out Dual Destinies. Like, look at this shit. And look at this fucking amazing 3D models. And it just totally shits on uh, how, like, Phoenix looks in the yeah. classic game. You're, you're absolutely right. Like, the, the 3D models in Dual Destinies are so fantastic and so beautifully capture the sprite work uh, that playing 
Professor Layton versus Ace Attorney afterwards, uh, it, like the models are kind of butt. Like Phoenix is kind of weird looking. Yeah. Um, that and that's that's unfortunate. But you know, you gotta kind of remember that this game came out before <laughs> in Japan, and then we've just been sitting on it for forever. Yeah, excellent point. All right. Um, can I? Can we move on now? One yes. more thing. No. <laughs> Go on. I want, I want One mo- more move thing. on Go to on. another crossover nobody knew they wanted. Uh, Hyrule Warriors in September, which is the yeah. only game we have on this list from September. So, talk about Hyrule Warriors, the Zelda X uh, Dynasty. Dynasty Warriors game that came out of nowhere. Is Go real ahead. good. Josh. I like it. It. Um... It kept me addicted to it until after Smash Bros. Wii U came out. And then I was addicted to something else. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that's a good sign, I think, that, mm-hmm. you know, you kept playing it for that long. Yeah, and, um, like, with the DLC, it raised the level cap from 99 to 150. So that's a thing. That's so there's more stuff with. to do. Yeah, and you're just more overpowered. <laughs> nice. Have you, cool. have, have you ever played a Dynasty Warriors game? No, so I didn't get bored of it, like some people say. Yeah, I, uh, I wasn't too excited for Hyrule Warriors because I had already been burnt down out of Warriors games. Yeah, I mean, I I fully get that. I I got Hyrule Warriors for Christmas, so I'm I'm not very far in it, but I have put a little time into it, and I'm really enjoying it so far. I've also never played a Dynasty Warriors game, so it's new to me but i can very well see how it could get old cuz it is you're just kind of beating up dudes like forever um but i think i'm having a lot of fun with it i think you know playing as the different characters and seeing what kind of crazy combos they can do uh is a lot of fun i think the characters they picked uh apart from a few glaring missed opportunities i think the characters that they picked are great um and they all so far the ones that i've played at least seem to be really cool and really fun. I don't like how a lot of them control, though. Like, mostly Minna, um, fuck, I can't remember her name. The bug girl. Agatha. Agatha. Uh, Agatha. Agatha. And, um, Zant. Those are the, it's kind of funny how it's all from Twilight Princess. Fuck <laughs> Um, those three really stuck out to me as just, like, hard to use characters. And, um, also I wanted to mention Fee, Fi, whatever, oh. both of them. She <laughs> says her name in the game. Yeah, it's yeah, fi. they do. Um, but yeah, she's kind of she's not super hard to control, but she's hard enough. But aside from Link, who's really easy to control, I'd say uh, Girahim is the second easiest to control, which is kind of strange. Interesting. How fucking cool is it that you can play as Girahim? Yeah, it's very cool. That's the, no, like I said, how cool is it? That you can't play as Groose. That's yeah. not cool. I'm that waiting is... for that DLC, guys. I'll, yeah. s- I'll sit back and wait, because that's all I really want out of life, is to play as Groose. Like, you announced this game where it's like, oh, we're going to have a bunch of cool playable like Zelda characters, and I'm like, all right, give me Groose. Give me Skyward Groose. Skyward Sword is involved as well. <laughs> yeah, Groose, that, is, Groose has got to be there. That's kind of the thing, is like, when they revealed Agatha, I think everybody was kind of like, oh man, all bets are off, she's so obscure, like, I can't wait to see what other characters are playable. And like, besides her, everybody else is like, pretty predictable. <laughs> like, there's no, she, she's really the odd one out, in terms of the characters they picked, you know. And I love Agatha, and I think it's great that she is playable, but it does kind of, you're kind of like, man, Agatha made it, and not Groose or, or Tingle, Tingle or yeah. you know, they kind of they because those characters aren't waifus, man. Well, to be yeah. fair, my to be <laughs> fair, there is um, DLC, more DLC coming. Yeah, yeah, but, I know, but they and haven't like announced. Majora's like, Mask is one of the games. Yeah, yeah I think it's not Skyward Sword. I think it's possible we might get Skull Kid in that pack. We probably will get Skull Kid. I would almost bet on it. I kind of thought he would be in it to from the get, but uh, right, yeah. I mean, I guess I'm wrong. They kind of only paid attention to, like, three games. Mm-hmm. Those being... Uh, Twilight Princess. Twilight Princess. Ocarina of Time. Ocarina and Skyward, Skyward Sword. Sword. Yeah. They kind of ignored everything else. And uh, that's a little disappointing because Zelda's got a really rich history of a lot of different games. And, like, since this isn't canon, they could give you, like... Yeah, I would have loved to have seen, like, 
uh, maple or uh, in general onyx and uh, onyx and varin. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Vadi, been... where the fuck's Vadi, man? Vadi would have been great. Yeah. And like, I kind of, kind of understand why they didn't really do Wind Waker characters, but I think they could have made it work. There is know? a single Wind Waker character in there. It's the Wind Waker itself. <laughs> that ain't, that a, ain't character. a character. <laughs> Shut up. Well, I mean, like, there's there's references to Wind Waker with, like you said, the Wind Waker as, an, as a weapon, and like the Deku stick or whatever can summon the uh... Deku tree. Yeah, yeah. Like, but it's the Ocarina of Time Deku tree. Well, okay. Didn't that All one right. die? Oh, but. Yes, it did. Um, she d- oh, for right. the Deku stick. She uses the Deku leaf from Wind Waker. So okay, that's probably what you got. From it. The, the, the game uh, did well, so they'll probably make sequels. Like uh, I, yeah. I'm really thinking. You know, we've we're on our third One Piece Muso game now, and I'm really thinking that uh, Hyrule Warriors could see another one with more characters. And I would love it if it did. I would love to see more. Uh, more Zelda characters playable, you know? I think that would be awesome. Yeah, I I, I agree. I want to see. I mean, I haven't played it yet. I want to. I just, uh, you know, strapped for sure. cash. Um, sure. But I, I, I would definitely want to see, especially Groose and Tingle, but there's plenty of other characters I would love to see. And uh, other weapons as well. Like, I thought it was awesome when they, like, showed off that the spinner was a weapon and, like, Epona. Yeah. Uh, I would love to see, like, a loft wing. I don't know how that would work. Be... Oh, how does Epino work? It's, it would probably be the same thing. Yeah. But like, I hate cool. the fairy bottle weapon for Link, by the way. I, I think if there was one character, other than Groose, who we've already said many times... Well, you can never I... say Groose enough, so... Right. Well, besides him, I think one of the bigger glaring missed opportunities is uh, Naburu. Yeah, yeah, I kind of thought Naburu would be in there. I kind of thought maybe all the mages would. Yeah, I think the... Sages. Yeah. Uh-huh. I think the seven sages like all could have been playable. That would have been pretty neat. But, yeah. but no Bruno really. and Dunya are definitely like if you can only pick two, those are the two that you pick. You know, well, they they it. offer up something different. Like they gave uh, Impa like the staff thing as one of her like weapons, and isn't that what Noboru uses? Like a big stick with a sword on the end of it. Well, like a scimitar. I, I mean, I yeah. guess isn't that like I her those weapon? Were the guards. Well, I mean, and she had swords. I can't remember. Does she have swords? I don't know. I don't know. Well, like all the Gerudo, like that you fight in Ocarina of Time, they have like the two uh... Schmitters. Is that what they're called? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Schmitters. <laughs> Schmitter, what's your name? Murring Man Jin. <laughs> the I know what you mean. They have two swords. Yeah. So you have two swords. Um. Ganon's design, man. Oh, I love man. Ganon's design. Holy Best shit. part of the game. Yeah, I think Ganon looks great. I think he looks the like alternate costumes of like Twilight Princess and Ocarina of Time Ganon are really cool. But I love the like Hyrule Warriors design with the Super Saiyan three hair. I think he looks super badass. Hell, I think the armor itself is just fucking cool as hell. Yeah, yeah. I also it's really a great like uh, I really like Zelda's design as well. I yeah, yeah. she Zelda and Impa great. like look really great in this game. It's sort of chic. Yeah, well, yeah, I like Sheik's design. They they really like emphasized um Sheik's like sort of femininity with the like ribbons and I this isn't feminine, but I love the she's got the kunai like strapped to her for easy access. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why you know that, but easy access. Easy access No, because he said it's not really feminine. I just wanted it. Well, I, I was I mean, being stupid. I don't mean. I just mean like you know, the the ribbon is clearly there to like accentuate you know Sheik's a girl, but the kunai are just because she's a ninja. I didn't. I didn't mean that. Hold on. Sheik's a girl. I didn't mean. I didn't mean that women can't have kunai. I just meant that that's that wasn't related to my previous point. Is the <laughs> only said that. I get it. I get it. I get it. I, but yeah, I like uh, scarf. By the way. Yeah, Link's scarf. I think is awesome. I I really like all of the designs in Hyrule Warriors, I guess. Yeah, they're a good, actually, like, cool middle ground. I like actually that. really like the Ocarina of Time Link alternate costume. Like, yeah. It's really... Like, if you were to do Link from Ocarina of Time in HD, he has a cool design. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. That's, that's uh... Is, is there anything more you want to say about Hyrule Warriors? 
Link Amiibo to get the spinner. Yeah, they it mentioned was... the spinner. But... I know they mentioned it, but they didn't mention like how, how? you get it. Eh. The amiibo fun I like the Amiibo functionality. <coughs> cheap it is, even though you can <coughs> get screwed and only get one rupee. <laughs> I think it's cool that you get something, even if it's like something they didn't, clearly didn't put any care or thought into. I think it's cool that you get something for having these amiibo, you know? Well, like, after you unlock the spinner, Link and Zelda do the same thing. You get, like, a three-star or higher weapon for yeah. anyone. So that's pretty cool. Nice. Oh, so if you're just starting out and you have the amiibo, do that. Get all the good weapons right off the bat. I like the right use. On. I like the use of the weapons, man. I like the uh, like the silver gauntlets. How he just fucking picks the ground up and just beats yeah. the shit out of people with it. That's Dude. yeah. That's, and he swings the ball and chain yeah, around. That's yeah. fantastic. That's fucking the best part about that weapon is the final form of the weapon, the power glove. It's not even my final form. Yeah. Yes. Deadpan. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move on. We talked about Hyrule Warriors long enough. I think. Um. October. Well, we already talked about one game from October. Yeah. Yep, yep, well, yep, yep. well, the next Urban game Earth. is uh, Shantae and the Pirate's Curse. I Am play. I the only one who played it? I believe you are. All right. It is a very pretty game. It plays much better than its predecessors, even though I like how the DSiWare game played. Um, Risky, was it Risky's Revenge? Yeah, yeah, yeah Risky's yeah, Revenge. Risky. I, pl I played Risky's sure Revenge, and I like it. Yeah. It's on Steam now. Yeah, it's Risky's Revenge. Right. Yeah. right, it gets rid of the like jumping between planes stuff, which I thought was kind of confusing in that game. That's um, weird because this one's in 3D. Yeah, I know. Um, what else? This it's it's a good game. I like the weapons. How it's kind of like a Metroidvania. Yeah, so was uh, Risky's Revenge. Which I thought worked well. Right. All right. Way Forward yeah. does good work, man. Way Forward yeah. knows how to make video games. They yeah. make pretty games. You mentioned that the sprites look really nice. They they definitely like got some talented sprites working at Way Forward. Yeah, they're they're good, man. They they, make, they, they get make good games. um the help from talented sprites from around the world. Like yeah. um, I was gonna call him Frario, but Mika Frar. Yeah, Mika Frar. Our friend Frario. Mika Frar. Yeah. He uh he's done work for. Way forward. I don't know if it's been it was on Chante, but like he's done work for them. Yeah, I know, and he's That's very, cool. very talented. He's, he's very just talented. one of many. Yeah. Yeah. That's neat. I I've always really like wanted to play like the Chante games. Um, I've played like a little bit of the first one. And uh, the Risky's Revenge uh, director's cut is on sale on Steam, so maybe I will finally buy that one and play it. I wanna. I I think the first Shantae is a gorgeous game for the Game Boy Color, but I think it's a little bit dated. Yeah, I didn't really enjoy it when I was playing the first one, but I, like, it was I, so many years later. Yeah, like I, I think for the artistry and just the, you know, the the characters are very likable. Shantae and Risky Boots and Rally Tops are really like endearing characters, mm -hmm. and like that makes the first one worth playing just for that. I think, but it's definitely not like if you're looking for like a great like game to play that's fun <laughs> that sounds really terrible but i really enjoyed uh risky's revenge so i recommend that one mm -hmm. sure well here um the original shantae uh and then like for its time i would say it was pretty pretty technical uh, they had like parallax scrolling and shit on the game boy so yeah yeah it came it's, out pretty it's, late in the game boy colors lifespan yeah it did it and and it, i think it's one of the best looking if not the best looking game boy color games it's really beautifully animated and like you said it's got parallax scrolling and stuff it's crazy yeah it's a nice looking game <laughs> uh so are, the, so are the others yeah yeah mm -hmm. i agree especially the <clears throat> the console one or whatever Oh, the, the one that Kickstarter one. Uh, half, yeah. G half Genie Hero. Yeah, I Kickstarted really that one. Forward. I backed it. I did. I did too. I'm really looking forward to playing that one. Yeah. I gotta play Pirates Curse as well, but I, you know, money. Yeah. Well, you gotta. You can only do when so much. That, when does that come out? Uh, it's anyway. TBA whenever they feel like it. All right. Much like all Kickstarters, TBA whenever. It's making games is hard, man. I, yeah. I understand. I understand. They run into problems. 
and uh, then, but they got to release it as soon as possible because like people are waiting on it. I you feel, know, I felt bad for Half Genie Hero. I mean, it met its goal and it met it pretty well, but it the fucking Kickstarter came out at the same time as Mighty Number no. Nine, and that was yeah. just eating the entire world up. Yeah, for sure. I felt yeah. bad. I think if Shantae would have came out at a different time, like a month done. later. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it did well. It made its goal and then some. You know, it's not like it bombed, but it definitely would have done better. I think. Uh, had everybody not donated all their life savings to Mighty Number <laughs> Nine <laughs> on day one. Yeah. Well, the people at uh, for the Mighty Number Nine like campaign, they were like, "Hey, check out Shantae and all these other indie games that you should back." For sure. So, We've got I think that was money. neat of them. It was. They were, you know, doing something with the huge fan base they had drawn. I thought that was definitely neat. Yeah. There's like a you know Kickstarter culture. So. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Alright. That's Shantae. Yep. Uh, yeah, yeah. The next game on the list is a game you guys are playing right now. Well, not right now, but playing like... Speak for yourself. Maybe Josh is. No, <laughs> I, 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 I turned my 3DS off. And it is Fantasy Life. I don't know anything about this game. Go ahead and talk about it. Alright. So, game so, by level 5? Having, yeah. <laughs> having the name Life in the title is just about right because it takes over my entire life right now <laughs> yeah josh is pretty addicted to this game yeah i i don't know what i like about rpgs mostly is like the grinding and just like leveling up and you growing like characters grinding? getting your oh, get new skills you know killing things I know that is kind of an unusual statement but i can confirm having listened to josh playing birth by sleep on skype <laughs> And hearing him cast Thunder a million times in one day, just so he can level it up. I can confirm that Josh does like to grind in RPGs. Oh. <laughs> thunder! I, I don't know, I just like being you able like getting to... Huh. And, right, and, and like ball, beating stuff, ball. and like, um... In this, in this game especially, like, getting materials, and using them to craft shit, and like... Actually crafting the stuff is I don't know it's just really cool, and like I don't even care about the story, like you know it's a nice little story. It's like oh we have to save the world. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> this RPG you have to save the world in it? Yeah. I don't want any part of that. I don't want any Never part of that. Done before. It's not my fantasy life. My fantasy <laughs> life is uh, chilling, blackjack, and hookers. Well, uh, like what? What's funny is. <laughs> <laughs> the the way they have the story set out, it's kind of like a Chicken Little type of thing, where the sky is falling. <laughs> like, actually? Or, like, yes. Chicken Little, whereas in... Oh, the sky's falling. Oh, no, it's not. Oh, okay. I mean, in a way, it's not really the sky falling, I guess. It's kind of... I haven't beaten the game yet. Um, but there's, sky. like, these rocks grinding. that are falling out of the sky. Yeah, essentially. Um, and they're called Doomstones. And you have to beat the Doomstones because they cover the enemies in darkness and make them super hard. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. It's The story is kind of like second fiddle to the actual game. Yeah. I I am not that far in this game yet. Um, I need to play it more. I've been busy with Christmas and other games that I got for Christmas. But I need to play Fantasy Life more because a very nice fan named Ben Sheffer bought this game for me for Christmas. Um, Thanks, Ben. And th that, yeah, that just blew my mind. Ben, you are an awesome guy. Um, and I'm really enjoying the game, so thank you very much. Uh, I need to play it more, though. Uh -huh. Yeah, you do. Story, I would, story of my oh, fucking life. I wish I we could play it together, but I downloaded the DLC. Yeah, let's talk about that. This game has online, which is super cool. Uh, you know, a little an RPG on the 3DS that you can like play and fight monsters with other people online. That sounds awesome. Too bad that if one person bought the DLC and the other person didn't, you can't connect at all. That's stupid. That That's very... ridiculous. I could understand. I could understand if I was trying to go to Josh's game and like I didn't buy the DLC, so like I can't do that. But he was trying to come to my game and they wouldn't even let him do that. And that's absolutely ridiculous. What's so... even more ridiculous is that it's not actually DLC. Yeah, yeah it's, it's on the cart because it's, it's on the cartridge. It's two um, MBs. That's two blocks. <laughs> two blocks. <laughs> two blocks. That's not. You're not actually downloading anything when you download two blocks. You're downloading an unlock key. Yeah, straight That's up. That's really fucking stupid. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, so that that pisses me off. But since I got the game for free, I'm just going to buy the DLC for 8 bucks or whatever it is, you know. And then I'll be able to play with Josh. But that is still asking. You're one of the up. suckers. Like, here's, here's also the thing about Fantasy Life. Um, I, I don't have the game, uh, but, like, I had read about it uh, and the little DLC thing. I didn't know that you couldn't play, like, between DLC and non-DLC. That is some else that I That's did bullshit. not like. It, yeah. it, just, it only adds to the problem. Uh, but, like, Fantasy Life, uh, the, the one you're playing right now is basically the Final Mix version in Japan. Uh, I, I forget what it was called in Japan. It's like Fantasy Life, not Plus. I don't know, but basically it's Final Mix version. Okay. Uh, and uh, I think... Oh, wait, I think it was Fantasy Life Link because it added online functionality. Mm. Ah. Uh, so they they had like extra content um, as I think the DLC as well, mm-hmm. but for the for the like North American release or whatever the Western release, they decided to make the DLC still DLC, even though I'm pretty sure Japan got it for free. I don't know. That's kind of shit. Well, no yeah. wonder it's just a fucking unlock key then. That's yeah. stupid. You're right. The Wikipedia says the international version of content of Fantasy Life Link, with the exception of the Origin Island DLC, because you can make money from that. Mm-hmm. That's that's terrible. Bum, 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 yeah. Come on. So I was I was not too enthralled by that practice, so I kind of just like and I was like whatever about that game. Um, yeah. I, but, I, but I was excited for it at first. Like I was, I was like keeping my eye on it and on the Japanese release because, like, hey, level five, um, a sort of like RPG, four player, uh, multi, like, like multiplayer RPG that interests me. You know, like the other game that did that was like Dragon Quest Nine, and that was interesting to me as well. Yeah. Uh, so, but I then love Dragon Quest Nine. when you do when you do shady DLC practices, I lose a lot of interest. Mario Golf. Mm-mm. No, can't do it. Yeah, I I I don't blame you. I I didn't know about any of that stuff uh, before I got the game, and I'm not saying like that I wouldn't have bought it anyway because I I was very interested in it. I love level five and what they do, except when it's shady. But, uh, uh, but to be like, on one hand, like the origin DLC or whatever, uh, I believe. It has nothing to do with the story. Like, it's its own thing. So it, it is actually additional content aside from, like, the, the main story. Mm-hmm. Right. So but you still, don't necessarily need it. But, that, still, you know, like... It was on. What if, what if I fucking just, like, take away uh, the Trophy Rush from Smash Bros., you know? Oh, let's make a DLC. You don't need Trophy Rush. You could just play Classic <laughs> all the time. <laughs> That would be fucking... Sucks. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's some shady <laughs> shit, and, like, that bugs me. But I'm enjoying the game anyway. It's it's very charming and cute, and... It's it's refreshing. This is something that Josh said to me the last time we were talking about it. It's very refreshing to play an RPG like this that's not all grim dark and doesn't take itself too seriously, and it's just f- fun for the whole family, you know? Eh. Oh, man. Another got a talking with butterfly. fantasy, and it takes itself too seriously. I will say, like, uh, Star Online? speaking about, no. like, not taking itself too seriously, uh, the town Al Majik, when you get there, it's just hilarious. Because they, like, turn it on its head. It's supposed to be this, like, dark, evil place. And everybody's happy. <laughs> they, they like living in That's dark, evil creepy. place land. That's kind of creepy. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, you'll have to see it and play it for yourself. Uh, Ricky oh. will get there eventually, and he'll eventually. know what I'm talking about. Yeah, eventually. Yeah. Eventually, yeah. <laughs> I, I find it a little interesting that um, like you like the gameplay of this game, but aren't too enthralled. I mean, just that because way, yeah. it's because it's uh, uh the opposite of Bravely Default. Yeah, no, it's not the opposite of Bravely Default. It's like practically the similar, but you don't like Bravely Default. Yeah, but like I had that gameplay itself, and that might be why. Well, this is like an action RPG, and. Yeah. That was like a turn-based RPG, so... I can play itself. 
Apparently. Huh? Yeah, but like it's Apparently. it's probably my own fault to, because I was playing it for the story, which is what you shouldn't do for fucking Fantasy <laughs> Life, Final Fantasy. Oh, or Bravely Default in this oh. case. Yeah. Fantasy Life definitely like you're playing it because it's cute and fun. You know the story. I'm sure is kind of secondary. You already said that. So. Yeah. And that's fine. Like I, I'm having a lot. Of, like the mechanics of this game are fun. It's cute, so I'm enjoying it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I did want to check it out. Uh, I'll probably get it when it's like a lot cheaper. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wait a couple months. Maybe. But maybe you can pick it by up. By then, by then I'll probably have Monster Hunter Four and yeah. Final Fantasy Explorers. Those two oh games my god! I'm excited Final about Fantasy, Final Fantasy Explorer. Final Fantasy Explorers looks so good. Yeah. It's fucking Final Fantasy with Monster Hunter, but let's not get too sidetracked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, next up, I'm going to talk about Binding of Isaac Rebirth real quick. Right. Uh, Phil also played it. He's like way more into it in this, uh, than I am. Uh, I really enjoyed Binding of Isaac, but I, I never got like anywhere as like near the depth that Phil would get. Because Phil plays... Binding of Isaac, like the original and the Rebirth version, a lot. Um, oh, and I should mention, yeah, it's it's like a yeah. Explain what pixely, the Rebirth. It's like a pixely remake of uh, the original Binding of Isaac uh, by Nicholas. 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 Nicholas Cage. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> But it, it like it adds a lot of enhancements. It changed like a lot of the mechanics. They add a lot of uh, content. Uh, there's like a challenge mode. There's a, you can play like two player co op. It looks great. It plays pretty fun. I wish it came out on 3ds, but like Nintendo's like no, no Bible shit. <laughs> uh, because it's, it's like you know based on yeah the, the biblical the, story. The biblical story, the Binding of Isaac. Yeah, yeah. But like. I like I think I talked about the binding of Isaac before and how like even though I wasn't like into like the biblical part, it's just like a really fun game. It's yeah, also really hard. Yeah. <laughs> I suck at it. Yeah, I suck at it too. Um but like Phil's super good at it. Uh yeah. Phil plays the game's like sort of like all about um like using skill to overcome a lot of the random luck that happens. And then sometimes, like, the luck is, like, super beneficial to you. It, I mean, I, I've never played either version. Uh, but as I understand it, it's basically like a... It's like the original Zelda, but, like, procedurally generated yeah. and, levels and, and um, enemies and stuff. I want to also, like, throw in some Smash TV in there a little bit. Yeah, it, is, <coughs> it, it does have... It does look kind of like a two-stick shooter, yeah. Yeah. It's great. Uh, check it out. It's on stream, probably on sale. Yeah, yeah. I I want to get it on sale. <laughs> so yeah, I didn't actually pay for it yet. <laughs> would you? But you would def, Would you recommend uh, Rebirth over the original? Oh yeah, of course. The original is yeah. fucking terrible. It's a flash game and it's like crashes all the time. And the, <laughs> the reason why they couldn't do anything more than the um, Wrath of Lamb or whatever the expansion is because like. If they added anything more to the code, that would it would be too much for Flash. Oh wow! It's like for Flash, there's a limit. Right. But um, they pretty much reprogrammed the game, redid the graphics, and it's 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 a much better package. And plus, it's on not PC. You know, you can right. play it on PS4. Uh, yeah, PS4. I think Vita as well. So. Oh. Wow, for there's the a game on the Vita. Two people yeah. that have that. Yeah. They release yeah. games on the Vita still. Is that still thing? Yeah, Vita? well, like, a lot of a lot yeah, of indie Dang- games. Danganronpa. Yeah. Danganronpa. <laughs> Didn't that come out on the Vita? People that, like that came out that year. I want to check it out. It looks, I'm it looks cool. At, I'm the laughing at the it. way Matt pronounced yeah. it. Yeah. Danganronpa. Danganronpa. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> dang it, <laughs> dang it, Bobby. How the fuck did you pronounce it? Danganronpa. Well, I don't. Fuck that. Dang and rump. They should just call it Trigger Happy Havoc or whatever the the subtitle is. 
Anyway, oh, yeah, that came out on the Vita, but who I cares? They should stick to the dang game ramper. Dang game rampa. It's a series, I'm pretty sure. I've, it is. Dang game rampa stuff. There's hold, hold, two games hold, hold, now? Hold, hold. No, no, Josh. No. <laughs> I don't know if people heard you, but no. <laughs> I heard him. I just We're chose going not it. to We're acknowledge We're ignoring you, Josh. Yeah. What the hell was going on about it? Even though we didn't play that game, um, well, people who like visual novels like uh, Richard's Last Reward or Ace Attorney games, they, yeah. they like Dang Game Rampa. Dang Game. It's supposed to be kind of similar on, uh, similar to Ace Attorney. Like there's like school trials, as I understand it. So, I hope nobody like go, like complains about the way. People are pronouncing the name of that. They will. It's Don Gan Don Don Rampa. Don Gan Rampa. They'll they'll make fun Rampa. of the way. They'll make fun of the way I pronounce it. Rampa. I don't give a shit. It's Dang Rampa. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're saying it that way on purpose. Yeah, just Dang just keep Rampa. just keep doing that. <laughs> We're not even talking about Dang and Rampa. We're talking about <laughs> Five Nights at Freddy's. About... Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, we got to move on, don't we? Yeah, that's the next. <laughs> that's the next game, and I just want to say. Before, Jess, I let you talk about this, uh, sure. Five Nights at Freddy's and Five Nights at Freddy's at Freddy's 2 might have, like, the record for shortest time between sequels in the history of video games. <laughs> it's true. They're only a couple what, months what apart about, from one another. What about Marvel's Capcom 3? <laughs> 3 and Ultimate? That was, like, a year. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. a sequel. No way. A it was less than a year. It must have been, like, seven months or something. Sequel. Less that's, than a year. that's not even a sequel. This is an actual, like, new game. What yeah. about uh, Left 4 Dead 2? That was also a year. All right. <laughs> Eat your heart out, Madden. But anyway, go on. Go on, Jess. Go on. Oh, my God. Okay. Uh, I feel like I need to start off by saying that as much as I still love the first game, Five Nights at Freddy's 2 did a lot more right. I think it's a much better game by far. There's a lot more to it. Uh, there's more hidden elements. So there's a lot more story. There's more to keep the player engaged in-game. And even the very first night of the game, for me anyway, was pretty damn difficult because of that. Uh, you now have ten animatronics to worry about. Not only do you have the remade Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy, who is now nicknamed Mango for, reason I'll, for reasons I'll get to in a minute, you also have the old decaying animatronics coming after you, plus Golden Freddy, who I actually forgot to mention in the first game. So I want to go back to that for just a second. Golden Freddy is an empty yellow animatronic. Freddy Fazbear suit, which will appear in your office after being triggered in-game uh, by you checking a poster outside of your office. After the poster changes to his face, he will spawn in the office, and if you don't immediately no, pull your no. monitor back <gasps> up when you see him, he'll kill you and also crash your game. <laughs> <laughs> He's back in this game as well. So that's fun. Uh, and... Um... You also have uh, a, uh, a puppet, which can be kept at bay by keeping a music box wound up. And this is essential because if the music ever stops playing, the puppet will kill you via jump scare. So you might as well, if the music box ever runs out and you hear that, dun, 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 you might as well just look away from the screen and save yourself a jump scare. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, you also have a statue of a little boy holding balloons, which he can't kill you. But he can get into your office, and what he does is he turns your flashlight off, disables the lights on vents, which are on either side of your room, and that can really open you to attack, of course. And he doesn't leave until the night is over. So unless you're on, again, the last like second of your shift, it's best to just keep him away. And uh, the flashlight is to check down the hallway, because this game they've taken away the option to close doors uh, due to what the phone guy says is a more modernized look to the building. Uh, so that's good. You can't actually stop them from getting in. They can walk right... Yeah. Thanks for that. <laughs> they can walk right... <laughs> So what you're given is an empty Freddy Fazbear head, which will actually, like, fool them into thinking you're an animatronic, and they will wander back out. So, um, but it does not stop Foxy, who, uh, or the decayed Foxy, at least. Foxy 
does appear, of course. He doesn't make a mad dash to your office like he did the last time. He just sort of kind of appears outside uh, your office, like farther down the hallway. And what you can do is you can, like the phone guy tells you that if you flash your light at him enough, he'll get disoriented by the bright lights and wander off. So, uh, but keeping the Freddy Fazbear mask on does not fool him, nor does it fool the puppet that I mentioned earlier. So... You've got a lot of shit to worry about in this game. And I think it's a better game because of that. Because you're not just, you know, unlike in the first game, you're not checking periodically outside your two doors. Um, You're not having to keep an eye on, like, two specific animatronics in particular, which are Freddy and Foxy. There is so much shit going on. Uh, And it's so much more difficult because of that. I was stuck on night four for the longest time. Bonnie and Chica, the old ones, are absolutely fucking relentless. It is ridiculous. And uh, it's 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 so ridiculously good, but it's so difficult. Um, I don't even... Well, I'm sure Scott knew. Like, sure, I'm sure that was his intention to make this as challenging as it possibly could be. And I love it. I'm, I'm so happy with how this turned out. And I'm so happy that so many people... Like, this got greenlit so quickly on on Steam, it, it actually kind of surprised me. Like, I knew the game would be popular, and I knew it would get on there, but it still kind of surprised me. Um, I'm just not used to indie games getting this much attention, and it's still, you know, Matt and I were talking about this earlier, of course, it's just so cool to see. Uh, so, I mean, it's just, it's a better game, there's a lot more story to it, there's... I feel like if I get if I get into the story, I'm gonna go on and on and on about it all night because, th- like, <laughs> the guys will tell you, if you were on like, if you were following me on Twitter around the time <laughs> that this game came out, there was new shit being discovered every single time we played it. It was absolutely ridiculous, and um, I don't really want to get too far into it uh, into it in case like some people haven't quite played it. But just if you're interested, if you like horror games. Or if you just like want like a, a mindfuck of a story, just go ahead and buy this game. Support the developer; it's awesome, and uh, it's like what seven bucks on Steam right now. It's, uh, yeah, it's probably like, a little. Bit it's sale. like six something because of the sale, yeah. But it's regular only. It's only regular seven ninety nine. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's cheap. Yeah, it's you know fucking you're throwing away your lunch money. Who cares? <laughs> so yeah, I, I remember you. Wingstop. <laughs> I remember you for saying stuff for eight bucks. No, it's like ten. <laughs> Fuck Wingstop. I know. I was about to say. <laughs> it's like I'm going to California's Wingstop. We can get that shit for cheap. Oh boy. Spend more in gas than you would on wings. <laughs> Go on, Ricky. You were gonna say something not related to Wingstop. I remember Jesse Wings. was saying how much. Shut up. <laughs> <sighs> how much you liked that, like. The creator was so excited to release the game that he just released it early. Yeah, actually, I it's it's yeah, I I think that's precious that he had originally like released a demo to a couple of people, like he released a demo to Markiplier and a couple of others, but he also like I think the story was that he put the demo up on I believe it was I don't remember what website it was specifically, but it was supposedly going to take a couple of days. Uh, to actually get put up on the website. And he was like, well, I'm not having that. So he just released the game the next day. So, like, the same day he released it. So it was... um, It's just just precious that the reason he released the game early was just that he was so excited about it. I just think that's absolutely adorable. (laughs) Yeah, it's it's like Matt said earlier. You can tell this was a passion project. And uh, even if it's not my kind of game, I think that's super... It's really... And That's on really, his website, yeah. he's constantly, like, dropping hints for the next game. Like, he's already, like, if you, he knows people are, like, going through the website and constantly, like, refreshing to see what he's what he's leaving there. And so, you know, he's left messages like Merry Christmas and, you know, stuff like that. But he's also left a big, like, if you brighten up, um, if you take a screenshot and you brighten up the image, I believe, uh, it shows, like, a big uh, digital three so he's definitely in the process of making a third game. But good lord, I hope the guy's taking a break. Because <laughs> I can't imagine the kind of effort that's gone into this one. And I can't imagine the kind of effort that's going to have to go into the third. Is there like a lot of new assets in the second one? Sorry? 
Is there a lot of new assets in the second one? Oh my god. Yeah, it's pretty much all new. Yeah, like the, the location different? The location's different, and like there's new versions of the old animatronics, and new there's... Animatronics. N- New animatronics, yeah. There's new... Oh, I didn't get to get into why Foxy was called Mangle in this game. Foxy is kind of left to, uh, like, keep the toddlers entertained in, I think it was called Kids Cove. And um, kids were not keeping their hands to themselves, so they would, like, constantly, like, you know, tug at him and, like, pull the parts off. And, you know, the staff would have to put Foxy back together, the phone guy says, at the end of every shift. So eventually they just left him there in a pick, pull apart, put back together attraction and just kept calling him the Mangle after that. <laughs> See, I thought you said Mango earlier. Mango? Like, Mango, Foxy? Call Mango? <laughs> Mango Foxy? <laughs> Mango Foxy. Mango Sentinel? Fuck that next. No, <laughs> Mango. <laughs> Mangle, M A N G L E. I I I know I know now. Dang and Rafa. I heard, I heard, I heard Mango. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. Mango Rafa. Okay. Uh, another question. Um, yeah. about the difficulty. You saying it was it's a lot harder in this game, and it's a much better game for it. Much. Um, harder. but. Uh, is it is it fair? Like, do you feel like it's fair, or does it bullshit you out sometimes? Oh no, it's it's fair. It's absolutely fair. Like on higher, like when you, it, the, this game has the same as the last game where if you beat it, there's a sixth night, which is incredibly difficult. So I hear I haven't actually gotten around to, uh, I haven't actually gotten around to it just yet, uh, but I do hear that it's incredibly difficult. Um, and uh, there's also a custom night. Uh, again, which uh, can allow you uh, the option of rotating through different, like, um, I don't know if you can set the AI yourself or if there are just, like, options there for you. There's 1020 mode, which a lot of people have already done, um, and it can take hours to do. Um, it's ridiculously difficult, so it, it really depends. But otherwise, like, I, I do think it's fair. I think some elements of it are a little bullshit. I think like I've said that Bonnie and Chica, the old ones, are in particular are just relentless in this game and that's absolutely true because I would be and this may just be me like kind of, that may have just been me kind of being a noob at it, but I still like when they get in the room the old ones, you have to immediately put on the mask. You can't wait a second and there's that scare element to it where, oh my god, they're right the fuck there. So <laughs> it's it's hard to really be fast but that's not necessarily a fault of the game so um you just have I, to be godlike so if, if you're a skilled player you'd, you'd be cat-like, fine cat like reflexes yeah if you if you've if you've been around the block a couple of times you'll be you'll be fine it's fair it's just creepy <laughs> it's the problem it's a so. game it's a trial and error game which very, oh, very much so it, or, you know it's got the same flaw as the first one where after a while it becomes more of a challenge game than it does a horror game which is you know it's it's that's fine. It's, I wouldn't even necessarily call that much of a flaw, but uh, the scare factor does wear off after a while. Um, you get used which to you it. know, Scott, yeah, you get used to it. So overall, fantastic game. I love it to death. Um, I can see why some people would think it was overhyped, but give give it a try if you want to. You know, try a different, more unique horror game. This is definitely the one. So. Um, I would play the first one first, but uh, if you want to uh, get with the the story, I suppose I don't know. I, maybe the first one's not necessarily to play if you want to get into the story. But either way, I would buy both of them just to support the developer because God knows he deserves it. So uh, I think that's all I will say about that because again, I don't want to gush too much. So <laughs> uh, what? Um, Unless, of course, there's something you guys wanted to ask, because I might have gotten something. I'm terrified I... of that stuff. That's not really a question, but <laughs> I'm terrified. Baby. Yeah. <laughs> I'm traumatized. <laughs> like, I, I didn't say this in the first, in the, like, when I was talking about the first one, but I almost didn't buy Five Nights at Freddy's. Like, I watched Mark play it, uh, like, the first night, and I was terrified. I, like, I watched him I, play it as well, and that was enough for me. It was, 
<laughs> like, I actually slept with every single light in my apartment on, and I haven't done that in years. It terrified me. <laughs> and I almost didn't buy it, but then I thought, you know what? I I, I need it. I don't know why I need it, but I need it. And <laughs> wouldn't you know it, I wound up loving it. So, um, yeah, I, I guess that's it. I, I love this game. Buy it, play it, support the developer. Go. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. All right. Speaking of indie games, um, the next game on our list is, uh, you, I don't know that anybody's ever heard of it, um, Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. I don't I don't know what that is. Somebody talk about that. I don't. What is what are you talking it's, about? It's better than those shitty originals. It is. <laughs> I, I feel like and you should, you should let, you should let Amanda talk about it. Yeah, go ahead, Amanda. Go ahead, Amanda. Why? Like, because I haven't had anything to say in a really long time. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Go. <laughs> go, go, go. Well, like, the introduction is pretty awesome. I like how it, like... It starts with the sprites. Yeah, it starts with the sprites, and, it, it, like, you relive the old days of talking to Professor Birch in the back of a truck. In 3D? In 3D? Yeah. I thought you were talking about like the intro, intro, like the little little, little water droplet. The intro the movie pond. thing. Yeah, oh. dude. That, I was like, man, that's sick. Yeah, well, like it did that in the originals. Yeah, I know. That's what I'm saying. Since, but seeing it in 3D. 3D. Yeah. It's cool. Yeah. Watch it. Sure. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Okay, All right, moving wait. on. Uh, Super Smash Brothers for no. <laughs> hey, now. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I really enjoyed it. You know, for me not liking the first three. You like games. them. You like them. Yeah. You just they're just the worst ones. We've had this conversation six hundred yeah. million times. So six hundred forty nine times. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> But yeah, like I really enjoyed it this time. The story is sort of they the added same. To the story, yeah, it really helped it. They they changed it so it's like all about mega evolution and stuff, which makes sense. Of course. Um, they added like an episode, which makes me kind of think they'll add like DLC episodes, but I don't think so. Maybe. Isn't like a what was it Battle Tower or some? Battle Tower. like a little construction thingy. It was the Battle Frontier. Battle Frontier. There's an under construction sign yeah. for it, and people want the Battle Frontier back, so it's like a hint at it. See, or I don't know what Battle it's Frontier just them is, being. It was in Pokemon Emerald. I know it is. It was the added feature. It was. I don't. I don't really know what to compare it to because I haven't done any post game stuff in any other games. Well, it's the exact same thing in like uh, Gen Four. Okay. With um. Like the castle and other stuff, except it's more. There's different challenges. Like one, they take your bag away from you, give you an empty one, and you have to collect like pokeballs and stuff. And I know that, we, and I only remember this because I ran into a shiny vile plume and didn't have any pokeballs. Ooh. Okay, oh. so let me ask you this: Is it fun? The Battle Frontier? No, yeah. it's like the Battle Tower. Uh, okay, the Battle so Tower is one why of are the people? Features. Why do people want it? Like, they like to challenge know. themselves, like, I guess. I don't know. Shit like the Battle Maison. 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 It's Maison. Maison's in it. That's it, there. It's straight up in the, like, island. Whatever it's called. I don't remember the word. Let's, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. Um, instead of talking about the Battle Frontier and all this stuff and everything. Oh, okay. Ricky... List, list the problems that you had with the original Ruby and Sapphire, and let's talk about whether or not they fixed them. <laughs> Are to, we doing this again? To make this game good. You don't, well, here, you don't have to list... We'll you go down the list and we'll say if they're fixed or not. You don't have to, right, like, my big, you don't have to list them in detail. Just you know. Sure. My biggest problem with the original Ruby and Sapphire is that there's only 200 Pokemon in them. Fixed. Uh, uh, that's less than Gold and Silver, and that's Asinine. I know that's fixed, because there's like 700 Pokemon now. Plus Mega uh, Evolutions. Right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's awesome. Uh, I also had a big problem that Dive was, like, criminally underused, and you could only catch two Pokemon underwater, and there was nothing you could get to underwater except from a town and the team base. That's fixed. fixed and yeah. I really like what they did with it. It is so much better. It is like, so you, much 
There's so many more places you can dive, you can explore, you can see Pokemon underwater. There There's trainers, trainers underwater. underwater. Yeah. Oh, see, that's awesome. How does that even, that's what does I that even work? That, it, it's they're, so, they're, they're divers. Suits. They have, like, scuba gear yeah. on. But I want to say no something tarmet. that oh. also adds to... <laughs> <laughs> There's also something that Don brought up that adds to that, also as well as well as like other stuff. Is there's a feature where you can sneak up on Pokemon. That's yeah. That, 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 that. Yes. Yeah. I love that. I love that. I got uh, Omega Ruby for Christmas, and I'm not very far in it yet. But I love the sneaking mechanic. I think it's a brilliant <laughs> addition. It and... it's it's a lot of fun. Like to like tiptoe up to the little tail peeking out of the grass. It's a lot of fun. Can't and wait to not do... see the next game. What they, and what they have done with it, where, like, you can get Pokemon that have egg moves or perfect IVs or, like, different stuff, is yeah. really cool. Like, you can yeah. get just random items on Pokemon that they wouldn't normally have just right. by sneaking up on them. Right at the beginning and of the game, I got a Puchiana with Fire Fang. Yep. Yeah. Like, that shit's tight. <laughs> Isn't there, <laughs> like, actually a, just like, one I got as well? Is there I'm just, advantage? Just because that's the one, like... Is the tutorial? You know, May is standing there. She's like, "Oh, tiptoe up to that pooch again." Like I'm sure they just give it to you, but I think that's cool. Is all I'm saying. You can fail it. Yeah, I failed it. <laughs> okay. Because like I just, I just, I was like, you "Whoops!" Up I to it? If you walk too fast, or if you run into another Pokemon before you get to it, it'll disappear. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Sucker. Yeah. Reset the game. Yeah, quit. Yeah. But yeah what I, I was I, gonna ask. Um. Isn't there like a like a mechanic where like you were rewarded for continually like sneaking up on the same Pokemon? Yes, I think the your, thing upgrades, right? Your Dex Nav, as you encounter it more, it up like it levels up, so it has like a search level, and the more you like, the more you encounter, the more rare stuff you have a chance of seeing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I think that's really cool. It's kind of like Poke Radar, but not stupid. Yeah. <laughs> And seeing Pokemon just, like, out around. In the grass, yeah. Not even it just in the grass, but, like, somebody has, like, a Jigglypuff standing next to him. If you look at the Jigglypuff on the Dex Nav, it will add a level to it. So oh, you don't even I, have to battle it. I've noticed that, actually, because, yeah, I was in a house and my Dex Nav was like, whoa, check this fucking shit out. And I was like, okay, it's yeah. a skitty. <laughs> it's a skitty. <laughs> and yeah. in the dive roots... There's places where there'll be like love disc or whatever swimming around, and you oh, can look yeah. at them. High level love disc. I know it's love disc. Nobody cares about it, but it's neat skills. that you can just like look. There's a little school of love discs swimming around. That is pretty cool to just see like Pokemon out in the wild like that. I mean, you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. Not in battle. Yep. That's another feature that probably won't come back. <laughs> yeah. Um. What are like? Let's see. I, another problem I had with the original Ruby and Sapphire. Again, I never played Emerald. I understand we were talking about the Battle Frontier. That was an Emerald. That's great. But in Ruby and Sapphire specifically, I didn't like that there was hardly anything to do post game. Catch the Reggie. Well, they uh, added the Delta episode. Yeah, so there's that's been fixed. You know, like that's one. That's the reason I was so excited for these remakes is because while I didn't like Ruby and Sapphire, I, I liked them. I didn't love Ruby and Sapphire. Uh, I was excited because I knew that they would fix all the problems that I have with it. And even though I'm not very far, I can kind of tell that they have, you know. Um, I think it's awesome that Secret Bases are back. That was cool. The things oh, you do with them are so cool. Here's a big problem I had with Ruby and Sapphire. There was no, like, day and night specific Pokemon. Still aren't. I, yeah. Not that I could tell. But yeah. there is a day and night system. There yeah. is a day and night system because it uses your 3DS's internal clock. Yeah, I I know I mean, that they're they probably system. just take it from X and Y's engine. So. Well, a lot of stuff is taken yeah, from X and exactly. Y's engine. Yeah, game. <laughs> they didn't bring back the Friend Safari. The Friend Safari's not back, but the the Safari Zone is back. I like the Friend Safari. Yeah, the Friend Safari was neat. It's yeah. a good way to get some good Pokemons. Yeah, Wonder, well, Wonder Trade. Wonder Trade is back, and, and that's really all. Good amazing. Pokemon. Yeah, well, like the, all the main stuff from X and Y, like Wonder Trade and EXP Share, Pokemon and Me, not the not the skates, but yeah, Pokemon and Me, that's all back, and that's all great stuff. Mm. Um, EXP Share is kind of like I actually I played X and Y with it on, but I found it to be way too easy, so I'm actually playing this one with it off. No way, gotta play with it on. <laughs> gotta play easy mode. I play with it on. Gotta play easy it mode. It makes it it makes it like really easy. easy. Gotta play easy mode. Yeah. yeah. 
and that's not a that's not a bad thing. I'm not saying it's, that's it's a game. series for kids. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, I, I think it's no. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I think it's great to have that option, like for kids, for kitties, for little Johnny. I think that's awesome. Uh, little Johnny didn't like anime. Yeah, I I personally don't really get to complain about like the single player like Pokemon X and Y being really easy, and I guess Oris as well. The real challenge will be coming from battling other people. Other people, yeah. yeah. It but, is. I mean, if you find it too easy, just turn off the XP share. Yeah, that's what I did. Like, it's a simple fix. Just don't use it. Yeah, it's an option. Pro like, tip, don't use it. I, do not it's use a, it. <laughs> it's like uh, casual mode in Fire Emblem. You know, like, I love that the option is there. Whichever one you actually want to use, it's but a great option. But you don't op- have to. Yeah. Well, it's I a great option. Op- I did, I did, too. But uh, that game's a lot harder. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Is there anything else you want to talk uh, about? Like story or anything? The Delta trying. episode. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah, Just, yeah. like, soaring on the mega of whatever laddie Pokemon <laughs> whatever you Whatever laddie. Well, like, it depends on what game you get. They just give it to you for free, and a lot of people complain about that. People, well, people will complain about it. Because they're just like, here, take it. <laughs> you you don't even fight it. You just get it. Yeah. It's your friend. It's just a... You yeah. get to fight the other one too. Yeah. Well, you get to fight the other one, and then you have to get the. Gotcha. You have to get the, the pass to the island to go oh, back yeah. there. Ticket. Yeah, that's and... another like post game thing. Yeah, that's another post game thing. I actually got that from um, the like. What the hell's the name of it? The passerby stuff. The... Yeah, those things. Like you get it from Street Pass. That's how you get it. The game has on- yeah. online. It would have more post game content than any other game out there, even if it didn't have post game yeah. content. Now that it has online. Mm-hmm. Uh, back to the soaring thing. You're able to like encounter Pokemon in the air because th- that's neat. There's like just random flocks of. Do you have amorphous. to listen to it? Is it like visible? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's There's like flocks of like amorphous black birds, and if you fly into them, you can get <laughs> yeah. into a campaign encounter with a Pokemon. Yeah. And there's also like secret islands that you can get to where you can find like special Pokemon or legendaries okay. from different regions. Or places to put your secret base. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, the secret base is stuff you can all reach without flying. Oh, okay. But like the islands with the legendaries and that kind of stuff, you can't. The thing I, I... want to mention about soaring is I'm just glad they got rid of sky battles for that because sky battles are fucking stupid. Yeah, but it's stuff. funny when you're in the air and you sit there and you throw it like Charmin. a geo dude or something that's standing on the ground. You don't know how you don't know how high up you have to be. He's in the air. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't care about how funny it looks though. I would rather have that. Yeah, it's like just, you can only use flying Pokemon. It's the same. Yeah. It's the same as like getting into battle on the ocean. Like if I'm surfing on my yeah. Squirtle and I throw out my fucking Onyx. Okay, obviously <laughs> my Onyx is not also on my Squirtle. So. Yeah. yeah, I uh, I I'm obviously not there yet, but I do think that the soaring mechanic looks like a lot of fun. I think it's a cool addition because it really like with dive being expanded and with soar being you know, invented, it <laughs> no, it really like you know you get to explore Hoenn, which is already a really cool region. <laughs> you get to explore it on land, in the sea, and in the air. I think that's awesome. It doesn't yeah. do it in the air and on the ground. <laughs> I was just about to say that. <laughs> I gotta make fun of myself before anybody else can. Yeah, it's um, better that you said it instead of me. Yeah. <laughs> also, another note, so another feature they added from X and Y is fly. You can fly to roots instead of having to fly yeah. to town. That's awesome. So yeah. you're not locked into having to fly to a town. Right. Yeah, I dig that. Definitely. What about uh, really cool. Amanda? You win. Like before the game even came out, you were really excited about like horde trainer battles. I think that is cool that they did that because like there's these enemy teams and what have they been doing for years? Sending one guy after and another at you. <laughs> Little like, kid. That's, that's that's kinda stupid. Like you got five dudes here. Why am I fighting you one at a time? You know, maybe if we all sent out our red hatters at the same time. <laughs> Ours exactly. <laughs> Pushiana, I believe. Yeah, it's Pushiana. Yeah. Um, what I think is stupid is that it's only like one set of um, grunts. Yeah. That, that that does that. And you only. It's like, oh, we're quintuplets, so fucking horde battle time. Oh, it's not like <laughs> it's not like a thing that actually shows up like at random. 
No. Oh, no. That's dumb. I feel like randomly encountering horde battles has been decreased. Yeah, I've it's done it like once. Decreased. I've only seen it once. But that's how that. you grind. That's how you get IVs. But they probably they, they good scrub. Yeah, yeah they probably realized again. that like an X and Y, it was stupid easy to get EVs what, more battles. That's what made it good. I, I imagine, still sweet yeah, scent. Easy. Sweet scent still gives you hearts. That was yeah. that was the easy way of doing it. So I'd imagine you can still use sweet scent. Yeah, and yeah you, you can. That's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, my time is valuable. I just wanted uh, to talk about the Delta episode real quick and how. I fucking killed the Deoxys. You, you, <laughs> you killed it? Yeah. I'm like, oh, I just want to see this dragon ascent <laughs> move. <laughs> and it fucking killed it. I'm like, I didn't. Re I thought it would take it down to like half. You killed Yeah. That's really funny because Deoxys is 10 levels higher than Rayquaza when you fight that battle. And you fight it immediately after getting Rayquaza. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that okay. move is overpowered. Yeah, can we talk about uh How like the balance is? changes with like from X and Y to Oris? Like it's it's like it's practically a patch. They patch some of the characters, not characters, like, uh, Pokemans, the ones that you can't trade back. There's like three. Yeah. It's the legendaries. Oh, okay. They because they have moves or the megas that they can't transfer over. Because Dragon Ascent doesn't exist in X and Y. Right. And then, like, the, is there moves that Kyogre and Groudon? Like, I know their abilities aren't in X and Y, so you can't use their Mega, well, Primal forms. Yeah, right. Um, yeah. I just want to say, they could easily fix that by creating a patch for X and Y. But they <laughs> yeah. said they weren't going to. Which yeah, I know. Also, Pikachu. you can't trade over the cosplay Pikachu. I know. Fight battles with it against X and Y, but you can't trade it over. You also can't really put stupid. it in Pokemon Bank, which yeah. means that it's not steered Pichu. You just have it for a game. Can I talk yeah. about how shitty Pokemon Bank is? <laughs> Go on. I didn't, know, like, I didn't pay for it, and it's fucking shitty. Like, you can't, like, transfer anything. No, like, why just even items. bother? Just the Pokemon. That's yeah, it. like, why, you, why the even bother? Part? I mean... Items. When it comes down to it, the Pokemon are, but you could easily, you could more easily make a new Pokemon than getting all your leftovers back. And getting leftovers is kind of butt in games. Yeah. It's annoying that you can't transfer items. There should just be a restaurant like there is an X and Y that you fight and you get leftovers at the end. It makes sense that you can't put Megastones in because they didn't want to patch them into X and Y. Right. Stupid. But, like, why not the rest of the items? Mm -hmm. I don't get it. So when I brought up about, like, balance changes, fucking... I want to talk about how Mega Rayquaza is, like, fucking broken as shit. Oh, yeah. my God. It he doesn't... got banned from Ubers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not making that up. He's no, just straight up banned true. from Pokemon, basically, is what you're yeah. telling me. They, yes. they created a whole new tier because of him. Because he is that broken. You mean That's you mean a more powered up version of an already powerful Pokemon is too powerful? You next you're gonna tell me that Megas are silly. <laughs> <laughs> but he's like better than a Mega. He doesn't need an item to go Mega. He just needs a move, which is really overpowered, obviously, because it one shot a Deoxys. Yeah. Level eighty Deoxys at that. Good. From a level seventy Pokemon. <laughs> yes. Good. Good. I don't get why it's called Dragon Ascent. That's a flying type move. I that don't get that me. either. Like, that doesn't make any sense. He's the sky high Pokemon, you see. Well, it's Ascent, right? Well, yeah. That's well, the he's... flying part. Yeah, he's, he's also a part dragon. dragon. It should be a fucking it dual, be type, a dual type, move. type move. Yeah. <laughs> no. We got like... one dual type move and it sucks. Yeah. <laughs> it's a pointless dual type. Like, nothing's weak to those two types. It's... That's why it exists. <laughs> because it's not good. It's not broken. Yeah. Except. <laughs> except for meanwhile. Quasar. Except for Rick over here. Yeah, meanwhile. Oh, let's, let's, let's just throw away belts. I'm Game Freak. Meg is for you. Broken ass moves for you. The same you. <laughs> the same the you. <laughs> <laughs> we can't eat that. Thank you for translating, man. <laughs> well, you were doing hand 
yeah, that's, that's that he pointed to my, one side again, and then he pointed to the other side. That's that was my again my corporate idiot voice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the guy who makes the greatest decisions in yeah. video games. Yeah, it's, it's 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 definitely like giving Groudon Kyogre and Rayquaza Megas is like, whoa, slow down there, hotshot. But apparently Rayquaza's like way better than. It is have. because yeah. the other two actually need items. Right. I mean, they're not like Megastone items. They're just the blue and red orbs. Right. That were already in the game. Right. But why? So, okay, I didn't know this. Just using Dragon Ascent makes him go Mega. That's no, just silly. having it. Having it. Yeah. He can go Mega. He's Mega just like I'm out the box. Mega. Like once you send him out and he's got that move, he's well, Mega. Well, in the battle with Deoxys, he starts out Mega, but you can like press the Mega button and do whatever as long as you have that move on him. But it's, so That's so he can so, so he can hold <laughs> another so item. Broken. It is. He doesn't even need. A Mega Stone. He can hold a whole totally different item. So I can have leftovers on my Mega Red Or a Life Orb and be oh. super broken. Oh my god. What were they thinking? <laughs> there yeah. Well, okay. See, clearly, uh, since he is required to have this move, it's predictable. <laughs> Predictability. Thanks, Obama. <laughs> Let me be clear. <laughs> Mega Red Quasar. Mega ability makes flying type moves stronger and negates all flying type weaknesses. Let me well, clear. see. <laughs> so let's make it even more broken than he already would have been. They were, they were doing pretty good with balance. Until <laughs> <laughs> Mega Rayquaza. They released Oris. <laughs> well, like the rest of the Megas aren't <sighs> like really bad. It's just Rayquaza. You want you want fucking you want balance? Just play X and Y because you can't play with Mega Rayquaza. So there you go. <laughs> Banned <laughs> from Ubers. <laughs> <laughs> that's good, man. Yes. That's good. That's, that's, nice that's an accomplishment. I don't know what you're talking about. That's like Rayquaza can go up to his friends and say. Are you banned from movers? No. <laughs> Do you even live? Yeah. <laughs> Do you even get banned, bro? <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, that's alright. And also, trainer customization should be back. Yes. And if um, then it's not. And their reason for not bringing it back is bullshit, because the Battle Mason is there, and they're like... the. What's the reason? The reason is because they wanted it to be specific to Kalos because it's France. Because they wanted, like, the boutiques to be, like, a French Man, that's thing. Bullshit. That's, that's not the reason. I, that's not the reason. I heard that it was because Brendan and May are such, like, I they're can't. actual characters that have designs and they didn't want to change them. Uh-huh. Except they changed the designs of those characters. Except they changed the ca- designs of the characters and in the cause, the, what's the thing? Yeah, the contests. Contests. They wear they different clothes. clothes. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's, yep. Like, they just wear different clothes. Yep. Okay. Just like in the show. <laughs> they Game Freak is really good <laughs> about introducing really awesome, like, like features, features and then just and then getting rid of them. them away. Yep. yep. Immediately. I'm surprised Pokemon Ami's there. Pokemon Ami. Yeah. I guess they were just like, well, we already made 700 models. I guess we might as well use them. <laughs> yeah, and all these unique animations of when you give them little cream puffs. Gotta have it. Use. Gotta, gotta watch Gumi go fucking ape shit when you drop one on the ground. <laughs> Please use it. <laughs> we spent so much time on it. My favorite thing is, like, Groudon, like, making a big smile at <laughs> him. Like, this guy just tried to melt the world, and he's just like, "Ah, cream puffs, I love you." <laughs> I just, I want to bring he's up just like a teddy bear, the, man. Whole, <laughs> the whole um thing where Archie's, you know, it's still the same story. So like Archie's trying to cover the world in water so that he could live with Pokemon, and like they basically, I'm like, "What did you think would happen?" Well, he's like, "I didn't expect this." Oh yeah, that was the world, the world. The world's starting to flood, and he's like, "I didn't expect this, <laughs> and I don't want it like this." And I'm like, "What the? Seriously, what the fuck was he expecting?" Yeah. Like he Fun. wanted to flood the whole world, and he didn't <laughs> expect it. To kill yeah, I want to flood the world, but I didn't expect a flood. <laughs> well, I, I I don't know, man. I'm I'm not there yet, but I remember really liking the story of both Ruby and Sapphire. Like I love the moment when. 
shit hits the fan and like you step outside with the leader of whatever team you know is attached to your game and they kind of are like my god like they take off their glasses what, like the, they're like what like dr what have I done? And, yeah and yeah. Uh, in that moment the other team member like the other team dude is yeah. there and he's yeah. like well, you you're idiot stupid yeah did you i think really like that part you just pitch yeah, him upside yeah, the head too me too. I, I do really like the story of Ruby and Sapphire. Even the originals. They did right with that. Yeah. So. Stop gasping. <laughs> <laughs> this man has been over gasped. <laughs> what the hell is that from? Um, is that you made the, the reference and you don't even Futurama, remember what Futurama. Futurama. No, that was Futurama. Yeah. Okay, then. All right. All right. Okay, so. <laughs> okay, should we move on? Another Welcome game. to <laughs> December. That one, you don't want to talk about any of the Megas? Like They're Mega all cool. Blade, <coughs> uh, Mega Sharpedo or Mega oh, uh, Frisbee oh. Disc? Because you mentioned it also uh, when surfing on a Sharpedo, you go faster. That is pretty cool. Oh, that's an interesting touch. Yeah, it's but you, cool. you can't fish while sharp, surfing on a Sharpedo because well, he eats Because he, so he eats the fish. He eats the fish. Because <laughs> he doesn't want, like, because they say, like, you can't let go because he goes really fast. It's, it's dumb, not... but you can't fish while surfing on a Sharpedo, so don't. That's... All right. They're not <laughs> fish. They're friends. That's, are... not... That's kind of an interesting <laughs> touch, but I, I kind of like yeah. that. And also, if you surf on Kyogre, he's, like, humongous. <laughs> yeah. Super As he should be. Touch. Very nice. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Kyogre's uh... got layers. Yes. <laughs> no. He's got Boo. insides green, green, orange insides that you can see through the holes on his head. Yep. Uh, again, uh, I haven't played too much of Orange. I've been mostly playing Smash Bros. Uh, I probably should get on it. Yeah, eventually. <laughs> yeah, eventually. That also reminds me of the Buzz Nav. Yes. And uh, they'll, they'll randomly have like just stuff, oh, kind of yeah. like the TV, and. The name raider. I get this message like every single time I turn my game on because I street pass with him all the time. Mm-hmm. He named his mudkip Rosiden. <laughs> and the name raider sits there and talks about it. Because Dodd took like f- almost 400 seconds to decide this name. I hear this message a lot. <laughs> they think he put a lot of thought into the name Rosiden, and I'm just. I can't take it seriously. I can't track of how long it took me to name my starter Pokemon. That's, mm-hmm. that's pretty hilarious. Jeez. Yes. No privacy. The buzz nav's kind of stupid, though. It's kind of stupid, but, like, I get moments that's like sad. that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they're sitting there talking about how such an insightful name it is and how much it shows how much he cares about his mudkip and it's like it's bro sighted guys please stop oh god they're bros for life <laughs> that is <laughs> incredible <laughs> uh. right, are, are we done with po- are we done with Pokemon we're never done. With I know we're not. But yes, but are we done? But with yes, this we're for done now? with Pokemon. All right. Well, we talked about Smash Brothers, so let's move on to December. Uh, there's only two games. We're we're almost done. We're almost Yay! finished. Yay! It's been like five goddamn hours at this point. Um, yeah. Kingdom Hearts 2.5 HD Remix, which is a remake, so I hope we're not going to talk about that for too long. But we'll it's, see. Gosh. It's Kingdom Hearts 2. It's really good. If you like. Is it on the PS2? You'll like it here. I have not checked out Birth by Sleep yet, but I did watch Recoded, and, you, and that bastard. shit is fucking stupid. <laughs> the main reason to get that game is to play Birth by Sleep on a console that isn't garbage. Yeah, mm. I know. I'm, I haven't played it yet because other things have been happening fantasy. in my life. Yeah. Your fantasy oh, life. Fantasy yeah in my fantasy life, yes. Yeah. <laughs> You're not fooling anybody, um, Josh. No one. No, but seriously, like, by the time I finished Kingdom Hearts 2, because I was grinding, it was three days before Christmas, I'm like, ah, I know Captain Toad's coming out, and I know I'm going to get Fantasy Life. So I'll hold off on Birth by Sleep until I'm done with at least one of them. I mean, I get it. It is kind of an investment. Mm-hmm. I'd be getting... Not for Josh, though, because he beats games in, like, two hours. Not when he's grinding. <laughs> hey, he's got to grind. Shut up. 
<laughs> I do. I really, uh, uh, I really want to get like H, uh, HD 2.5 remix because I fucking love Kingdom Hearts 2 and Birth by Sleep so much. They're the, like, like <laughs> just getting the two best Kingdom yeah, Hearts games. It, it, ex- in my exactly, opinion. getting the first HD remix was pretty much just so that they would make a second one because like I this one is so much better than the first one. Just I haven't even played it, but I've played those games, so like I already know that it's better, and I really want to get it, and I really want to play them again, experience them again. And uh, that would be neato. Yeah, I'm most excited for Birth by Sleep in HD, but I gotta get a PS3 first. Yeah, so. yeah sucker. Um, I will say the Roxas battle is really cool, and it, it will kick your fucking ass. I mean, I did it on <laughs> crowd mode, so usually I, you know, first playthrough I do standard, so maybe that's why I was sucking, or it's just hard because crowd mode is hard as balls. Um, but. I also got to the extra boss at the end where you're fighting a certain person's armor and that is hard as shit. I have not beaten that yet. Oh, you're talking about um the, it's got a name. The extra boss. Yeah. yeah, I can't remember what the I know who you're talking about, but I'm talking about that boss is like forgotten fragment or something. Something like that, yeah. I don't remember. But yeah, uh I haven't played uh, Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix, but I know that Rage Awakened is the name of the song that plays during that boss fight, and it also appears in Birth by Sleep, and that song is amazing. So. <laughs> the more you know. <laughs> cool. I was, I was going to say, uh, you think Proud Mode's hard, man. Critical Mode. Critical's fucking... It's, critical. That shit's hard. I think, I think Proud Mode's easy, to be honest. Like, I always played on Proud Mode. Like, I mean, um, I beat it. Previous games. You know, almost no problems. Like I said, the Roxas battle's the only thing. Like, I beat Sephiroth, no problem. And Roxas is what took me longer. Interesting. I, I, Roxas? I just want to say... Roxas? I want to say that uh, Kingdom Hearts uh, 2.5 HD Remix... What an awful name. But um, it... It came out at a really bad time, for me anyway, because it came out like two weeks after Smash Brothers, and three days before Captain Toad, <laughs> which I also don't have, um, and I didn't have money for any of the three at the time, and to rub salt in the wound, Square released this $100 like collector's edition for oh, yeah. HD Remix 2, and it came with like an art book, and like a pen, and like a plush, like uh, Shadow Heartless. Heartless. And, yeah. like, all this cool shit, and I'm just like, I want it so bad, but I can't even afford Smash Brothers. How can I fucking afford this? And I was just I was just mad. I just wanted to share that story, because fuck Square. Yeah. <laughs> I did not know about that extra thing until after the game came out, so I just got the pin because I pre-ordered it. Yeah. So I missed out. And not that I would have had money either way to pay the extra. I didn't even think I had this paid off, but whatever. I got a pin, and it's neat. And if you want it, I could probably send it to you or something, Matt. Aw, oh, here's sweetheart. It's, but you don't have to do it's that. Lingering, it's lingering will, by the way. I, I had to find out because somebody in the comments was going to correct me. <laughs> nobody made, Forgotten nobody made it this far. It's lingering will. Anyway. Uh, uh, yeah, the, do you have anything else to say about Kingdom Hearts 2? It's this, I mean, you've played Kingdom Hearts 2. Everybody's played. Yeah, it's great. It's a good game. Um, I still didn't like the magic system. I I really like how they handled it later in Birth by Sleep. I definitely but, do prefer that, but I still think that Kingdom Hearts Two is fun. Like I, it works. You know? Right. I was just about to say it's much better than the first games. Yeah. So huh. yeah, that's about it. So time for adventure. <laughs> that's, yeah, let's move on to the last game, which I was one of my most anticipated games of the year, and I didn't get to play it. So. Hashtag sadness. But uh, there are people here that do have it, so... Yeah, you talk, I got uh, it. You, you guys talk about Captain Toad. <laughs> oh. I've only been able to play it. You'll be able to play it, <laughs> you'll be able to play it next month. Ba, 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 yeah. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> go on. <laughs> <laughs> no, go, go on, talk. It's great, oh, man. It's, yeah. It's so cute and charming and just... Like, it's exactly what I thought it would be. Like, the puzzles are fun, and Toad and Toadette are adorable. And, uh, yeah, like, if you like the Captain Toad levels in 3D World, which I did, then you will love this game. I've only played it for about an hour, because Fantasy Life is that addicting. 
Um, but from what I've played, I really liked it. Yeah, it's it's really really cute. Like, it. I just I love Toad. I love that he's getting his own game. That he's got. He even made it into the title this time. Uh, and yeah, I I am all for Captain Toad in Smash Brothers now. <laughs> yeah, man. There was um. This is kind of a silly story, but there was. I, I, there was there was a point like last month and like uh, that I, I was just kind of in the in the in the dumps like I you know, I was really broke and didn't have any money and I was just feeling down all the time because there was a lot of stress going on because of work and because of other things and like one of the stupid little things that would keep popping in my mind and make me happy because I'm a fucking fool is like man Toad is it starring in his own game and like that just stupid little thing would always put a smile on my face even when I was feeling down so like. I'm really excited about Captain Toad's just existence. Like, yeah, I I was trying to explain to my dad earlier today. Like, I love the game. I'm really having a lot of fun playing it. But almost more than that, I love that it exists. Like, yeah. I, like, even if I didn't get to play it, I would just be so happy that Toad, you know, got a game that's this cute and this fun. Yeah, he's the. What about Wise Woods? He's the star. That ain't cute or that fun. That's a fine. <laughs> <laughs> that, game, yep. that game's yeah. that game's fine. But like, you wouldn't know it's a. Toad game by just looking at like just no. it's Wario's called yeah Wood? it's called Wario's Woods like you're gonna think it's a Wario game. <laughs> yeah, Wario's Woods on not Wario. It came out even it even came out like at a weird time when like Wario was barely a character. He was in like one game <laughs> by the time that game came out. What a weird Wario's Woods is weird. What a weird. Isn't game. there some like bucket on oh, Mario's head or something? No, that's a different one. That was Mario and Wario. Going on. Why is weird wood? Yeah, yes. Wario's wood is very weird. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> but well, yeah, just I I really want to get Captain Toad. I will get it. I can't not get it. I am obligated as a the Toad's biggest Nintendo fan open. to buy it. Yeah. And I just it just makes me happy that it that it's here. Like almost more than any. I like. I, I'm sure. Like Smash Brothers is a game I'll play much longer than it, and it's probably maybe even a better game. But I just no game that even a game that I don't own has made me happier this year than Captain Toad. So yeah, you'll you'll love it. Like the I just earlier today played the train level, and that level kicks my ass. It's amazing. Um, I just like trains. <laughs> <laughs> just I I love like. I, I love the levels that are like a cube. It's like a really intricate diorama. Those are great. But I also really love and appreciate the levels that break that, you know, like the train or uh, like the the level. It's another really awesome stage when like, you know, the the bird kidnaps Toad at you got to go save her. When you get to the tower and like the bird is there, it's such a cool stage because you're trying to climb this tower. And the bird is like rotating around the tower and he keeps blowing gusts of wind at you and trying to knock you off. And like you have to hide behind like blocks or the tower itself. You have to like position yourself so you don't get pushed off. It's so creative and so much fun. It's a great game. You're going to love it. I, I know I will because I love those levels and I wanted a Captain Toad game even before there was a Captain Toad game. So, yeah. I think it's so cool that like, again, that it happened. Yeah. Like it exists. Like when we first saw the, yeah. um, the announcement trailer at E3, we were like, "Oh, cool! They listened, you know. Yeah. Like people were people were clamoring for this." We found out later in like what asks and stuff that like they already had this idea for a game and they threw it in. Yeah, originally it was gonna start like Link. That's weird. Yeah, yeah, and like what? they threw it. That's they, they threw it in 3D World to like test the waters and like that's cool too. But I still think it's awesome that like you know the people who were clamoring for that game get to play it now and it's really good. It, it so. Yeah. Yeah. It is unfortunate though that it had to come out two weeks after Smash Brothers. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of bad timing on Nintendo's part. I don't know how well it's gonna do because it's like a budget title, which you uh, think would be like a boon for it, like that would be a good thing. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of this cute little it's, it's like not a Mario game. Yeah. I think it'll do all right for itself. I mean, people know Toad. He's been in enough Mario games, like big Mario games, like the new Super Mario Brothers and 3D World and stuff that. I think people yeah. people will buy it for their kids, you know, or whatever. Yeah, I think it'll I think they, it'll do all right. I don't know that it won't do great. Like Smash Bros. obviously is the winner. Smash Bros. and Mario right. Kart. And Mega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Yeah, they're the winners. Course, Those yeah. came out on the same. But day. I think they'll do they'll do all right for themselves with Toad. Yeah. Well, like I think you like you said, Toad. Like even if they couldn't necessarily name him, I think that your average person on the street would recognize him at least. Yeah, they'll know he's from Mario. So. 
That's yeah. all that matters. Yeah. But I think that wraps up all the games. Um, before we, yeah. we do... Uh, yeah, no. Shut up. We do have a little bit of uh, in addition to going around and saying all of our game of the years, we usually do a segment where we um, talk about old games that we played for the first time this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, can anybody off the top of their head think of like? Uh, I played uh, Dual Destinies for the first time this year because it was on sale. Um, oh yeah. I never actually finished it, unfortunately, but I did uh, play the DLC, and that was fantastic. Yeah. yeah. I played Mighty Final Fight this year. Oh. Interesting. Yeah. That game was okay. Yeah, mostly because of our Let's Play. And I'm like, ah, it's on the eShop. Why not? <laughs> um, it was all right. I didn't beat it. I have to go back and play it. Right. Oh, uh, what else did I play? I don't know. Skip me for now. Hey, Matt, did you play Nidhogg? Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> that came out this year, though. Yeah, that doesn't count. That came out this year. <laughs> Man, ah, come on. Damn it. Damn it. <laughs> He's trying really hard. <laughs> I went. What is the chapter? Uh, Do we need to get you a gold sticky star? Are we are we talking about games that we played this year for the played. first time? Yeah. Yeah, like old games, yeah. God damn it. Um games games that didn't come out this year but that you didn't play until this year. Uh, I know for a fact that Kyle played Fire Emblem Awakening again. Yeah, well. Yeah, but he had already played it last year. Yeah, yeah. I know. But he already played it again. Yeah. He already played it again. He, he played it all again already. He's okay. played it like seven times. <laughs> um, so we played, I, we played I have... Wind Waker. I can't think of anything off the top of my head, honestly. Yeah, I, 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 did. Right. I I haven't got started on it yet, unfortunately, because you know Christmas. I got so many other games, um, but I am going to get to it. I'm really excited for it. My good friend Steph bought me. The world ends with you for Christmas. Ooh, nice. That's a really good one. Yeah, I've heard nothing but good things about it. I know Josh and Don love that game. Uh, yeah, it's fantastic. Steph loves it as well. That's why she got it for me. So, yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to playing it. Sorry, I haven't got to it yet. I don't know if she even watches her stuff, but sorry. <laughs> I have a lot of. Yeah, it's got a lot of well-designed mechanics. Yeah, I'm I'm really looking forward to playing that uh, next year. <laughs> um. Womp womp. I'm trying to think if there was a game that I played for the first time this year, though. I don't know. Um, Ooh, I have one. I started playing Final Fantasy VIII this year. Oh, yeah, you did. Yes. I didn't beat it, but I got to disc two, I think. Which reminds me that Don started playing Final system. Fantasy IX. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So that's a fun little... little I forgot that, this, that was this year. Yeah, and then I had to me move. Me too. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of early in the year, I think. Yeah. I've moved a lot this year. Yeah. Hey, there's, there's, there's big things happening with me and Amanda. Yep. So I haven't had too much time to play. Uh, nothing Anything other than Smash Bros? Yeah. Yeah. I was there... say that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a game that we all played for the first time this year and last year. Actually, it was last year, so never mind. Is it Crystal? <laughs> I was going to say Crystal. That was last year. We're just the worst. We're just the worst people on the planet. It was over a year ago. Oh my God, we suck so much. (laughs) I mean, I am. I am. I will. Won't be afraid to admit that I am part of the problem. For, like, Crystal. For going up. Uh, They had taken a long time to go up. It took uh, time to even finish playing it, though. yeah. Yeah. Like it was, you. I, for the, I, for I, the beginning of the year, you were still working on Final Fantasy Seven. I was. <laughs> so I'm part of the problem as well. Yeah. We're all horrible YouTube people. Why are you even watching us? <laughs> yeah. Because we have Josh. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's that's reasonable. I'll, I'll accept that. I wanted to. Um, I mean, I don't want to derail from this. But I wanted to ask what everybody what what's the game everybody's looking forward to the most next year? Mm, uh, good question. Because I know mine, um, and it is Captain Splatoon. Do- oh, Splatoon's pretty damn fucking cool. I think uh, that's, yeah. I'm excited for that. That well. might be my answer as well. I'm pretty excited I'm, for. Yeah, I'm very psyched about Splatoon. Uh, I'm between that and Rainbow Curse. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, well, that's February. I'm I'm very excited for Rainbow Curse. Um, I'm excited for Woolly World too, but I don't know. Got to play Woolly World one first. Did Smash Bros. Stage turn you off? Uh, no, it didn't. I just I just <laughs> like, 
I just love Kirby. You know, like I'm a Kirby guy, so yeah. I'm really excited for that game. And I love Canvas Curse. I I adore that game, so mm-hmm. I'm super that game excited. Was fantastic. Yeah. Um, I want to say Star Fox. Star Fox. Like my... Oh, they, yeah, that's gonna be, <laughs> that's Star gonna Fox. be cool. Yeah, Star we Fox. don't know anything about Zelda. that game though. Well, Zelda's supposed to come out in 2015. I don't. Zelda's, Zelda's, Zelda's not coming out. Star- Zelda's, Zelda's not coming out next year. Star Fox is going to be in I space. And it's going to have uh, animals. They wanted uh, Smash Bros. out in 2014 and a half. Yeah, we'll look what I happened with that. We might see it. Shut up. <laughs> Ah, we'll probably see yeah. it. I don't know. What else they got? Yeah. Up? I, don't count it out. Okay. Uh, Star Fox Wii U, like, that's, I think, if they go, like, uh, not really the full-on multiplayer route, but, like, if they really make the online multiplayer robust, like, dogfighting and shit like that, I think that's Dude, I've been, really I've been saying, I've yeah. been saying for forever now, if they'd made, like, a 24-player, like, online, like, Dog fighting like Star Fox mode, that would just be the tits. That would be yeah, that would be yeah. fucking fantastic. I think there's a market for that. I think like Nintendo's yeah. Nintendo's not very like big into like online multiplayer and everything, and like that's co- something that kind of the competitors got on them with like first person shooters and everything being such massive online modes. But I think there's a market that Nintendo can like move their way into with like an online Star Fox game. I think that that's something yeah. that they should look into. Yeah, that would be yeah. like Steel Diver Subboard. Yeah. Not as good. <laughs> Except not as slow. <laughs> yeah, not a really slow. For... Okay. But Steel Diver, like actually a pretty good game. Mm-hmm. Remember that. Remember that. Actually a pretty good game. And uh, Splatoon could yeah. move into that market as well. So. Yeah. Yeah, Splatoon I'm excited. a lot of fun. Yeah. The more they show that game, the more I get excited. Like the single player mode and like the little octopus people. It's just That game looks like it's got so much like character. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you guys see the picture where like they compared a real squid to the <laughs> squid oh, yeah, girl, yeah. and like how it has the same amount of tentacles? I'm, uh, isn't that from their Tumblr page? I think so. Yeah. That's funny. Which is pretty neat. They're like doing like they're doing research for their squid girls. <laughs> no, not research. I'm talking about like they're using like oh their Tumblr t- or social yeah. media to like advertise and talk about game mechanics and stuff like that or designs and even. It's their own uh, Smash Dojo. Yeah, it's just neat. It's a little neat. It's neat. Um, yeah, I, I'm surprised Josh you didn't, you didn't talk about like Monster Hunter 4 at all oh, or anything shit, like that. That's or, right. like, I keep forgetting. Getting Final... a new Super... No, not new Super Mario Bros. A new 3DS. Yes, yes. Yeah. I, I'm really excited for all of those things. I'm, well, I, I would say I'm excited for... Monster Hunter 4 and its ripoff, Final Fantasy Explorers. <laughs> yeah. I'm also excited for it. Uh, I actually am. I think Final Fantasy Explorers actually looks really cool, but I'm also excited for, even though I don't own the console, uh, Uncharted 4 is supposed to come out next year. Yeah. And I fucking adore the Uncharted <sighs> games, so. I know you do. I know I'm going to have to get a PS4. Eventually, sometime next it. year, I will probably have to break down and buy a PlayStation 4. I'm going to need one anyway. Fucking Kingdom Hearts 3 is going to come out in like eight years, so. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Hopefully what the are... price will drop before I buy it this time. <laughs> it's already a hundred dollars cheaper than what I paid for the PS3, so I'm good. That's good. Patience. Uh, I was I talked about it earlier, um, like in the podcast. But fans pain, I'm pretty excited about that. It's gonna be much better than Ground Zeroes. <laughs> it's gonna be bigger than Ground Zeroes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's got yeah. a chicken hat. Uh, and, and sexy yeah. cardboard boxes. Yeah. I might wait until the PC version because the PC version is pretty good. Um, For Ground Zeroes. I don't. Yeah. I I I'd probably prefer to play it on a PS Quadruple, hmm. but I don't have one of those, and I can't really spend money to get a PS4. So I think we should end this with a kind of strange... I don't know if we did this last year. Maybe we did. Um, What unannounced games do you think are going to come out in 2015? Uh, Mega Man game by Sakurai. I wish. Before we answer that, though, we should go around and everybody say that they're game of the year. Okay. Yeah, that's a good one. You start. Me? Yep. 
Um, it's a really tough one for me. Um, I think I will preemptively say that many of you might be surprised. I don't think, correct me if I'm wrong, speak now or forever, hold your peace. I don't think any of us would call Smash Brothers their game of the year. Um, I, I don't. That's a completely other category for me. Like, I it, might just purely because the lack of games I've played this year. Most of the games I've played, I only played with Dawn. Mm-hmm. So, like, it was mostly multiplayer stuff. Mm-hmm. I haven't played Oris on her own. I know. Yeah. Sapphire is your game there. I, well, I really liked buying clothes. I really miss it. <laughs> How dare they? <laughs> How dare they? <laughs> yeah. Play? Shut up, Dawn. Shit game zero because you never complain <laughs> about a game getting rid of a, a, a stupid feature. Yeah, like target test. Well, what? What? You know who likes zero that? Zero ten. Ricky, what's your game of the year? Uh, it's I'm torn between Shovel Knight and Kirby Triple Deluxe. Those are the two games that I had the most fun with, and they're I enjoyed both of them for different reasons, and it's tough for me to decide between them. Um, I probably got more hours out of Triple Deluxe. Yeah, probably. <sighs> That's um, <sighs> it's really tough for me to say, but because I know other people are gonna say Shovel Knight in this call, yeah, I like, will. Y- y'all already know, like my game of the year, Shovel Knight. <laughs> No. I, <laughs> shut up. I will, <laughs> I will rep Kirby Triple Deluxe and call that my game of the year. Alrighty. Just to be different. Just just to because I really had a lot of fun with it and I feel like it deserves it. Even though I had a lot of fun with Shovel Knight as well. And Shovel Knight might even be it is a better game. Like But hey. I just I yeah, I, I I think my favorite game that I played this year was Kirby Triple Lux. It brought me the most joy. So that's what I'm gonna say. Okay. Uh, Don, you just said that yours yeah. is Shovel Knight. Yeah, my game of the year is for sure Shovel Knight. Like without a doubt. Like, yeah. I said that since the game came out, or that yeah yeah since since I played like played and finished the game, I was like right, game of the year. Buy Mario Kart. Buy whatever other game that uh, also came out this year. Nidhogg. <laughs> Shut up <laughs> about Nidhogg. <laughs> uh, I, did, I will say I had a lot of fun with Mario Kart 8 as well. I think Mario Kart 8 uh, is a contender, but it's not mine. I, was, I thought you were going to say Mario Kart 8, to be honest. I, it's really good, and I have less problems with it than I do with Smash Brothers, but... I don't know. It's just I, I gotta give it to Triple Deluxe, man. That game's great. The thing for Shovel Knight, like the way that I played it, which is like checkpointless. Yeah. Uh, it made it incredibly, like gratifying when yeah. I would, like beat bosses and stages and shit. Because I would be at it, I would be working at it like hours at a time. I was streaming it too. Yeah, I watched you. People would get bored and be like, man, you're just dying over the same thing over and over again. Just just use the checkpoints. And I was just like, no, no. Like, I, I, I didn't want to do it because then, like, that gratification wouldn't be as much to me, you know? Yeah. Like, it was, it was something I was, like, working really, really hard on. And then it, it pays off when I actually would make that, like, inch of progress every single time, you know? And it was it was really really satisfying experience for me. Um, only thing, like that that came close to it, is getting knees in Super Smash Bros. <laughs> As Cam Falcon. Oh boy! <laughs> right on. Uh, <laughs> so, all right. Uh, who wants to go next? Who already went? I I, was, I stepped away for a second. It was, it was Ricky. Just just me and Don. Yeah. Josh, what was yours? All right. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm kind of <laughs> torn between a few games. And it's just because of how much time I've already sunk into them. Um, I would probably say I'd like the toss-ups between Omega Ruby, or Alpha Sapphire, rather, 
Um, Same game. Fantasy Life. And Shovel Knight. Uh, Three good Alpha, games? Yeah. Alpha Sapphire is kind of, you know, an obvious Pokemon one for me. Yeah, Josh loves him some Pokemon. <laughs> um, Shovel Knight is just a fantastic game, and, you know, I I don't argue with anyone who has it on their list. And Fantasy Life's just kind of like a oh, well, fun game. Yeah, it's taking over my life. That's why I even consider having it here. So I think I didn't even finish the game yet. I'm going to stick Fantasy Life there for now. Nice. Wow, you must really like it. Mm-hmm. Also, it's taken over his life. You must like <laughs> oh, Otherwise, yeah. you wouldn't keep playing Tom- it. Tomodachi Tom- Tom- Life took over his life for a little bit. For like a day. <laughs> yeah, a day. That's nobody okay. came there. <laughs> <laughs> I love Tomodachi Life. I- I'm I glad I bought it. I still love... It's not really a game. Yeah. That Josh game plays is- itself my... not as much as Bravely Default. But it does play. Fuck all right, all right. <laughs> go ahead. Okay, I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Um, <laughs> mine. It, it was really hard this year to pick a game of the year because there, I didn't play very many games, but the games I played were all super fantastic, and th- there's games like Smash Brothers and Mario Kart, which are both, I think, phenomenal games. And I'm going to be playing those games for a very long time. And then there are games like Shovel Knight and Kirby Triple Deluxe, which, although I'll probably replay them over as time goes on, you know, those are just singular experiences, and but they're fantastic experiences all throughout. But I think if I, but I think if I had to pick the game that just brought me the most unadulterated joy, um, beyond any any anything else that I played this year. I'm going to say Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Oh, that's um, a good one. That's a good choice. Yeah. yeah. I I mean, it's tough between that and Mario Kart and Smash Bros. And all those games that I listed, it's just it's really hard. But it's just every single level of that game just just was so, like, incredible. From the next one to the next one to the next one. It's like every time you progress in that game, you're just you're just having a blast. And I was having a blast. And, like, every time I died, I, was, I never felt like it was my fault. Or it was my fault, rather. You always. Yeah, you here. know what I meant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, well, if, 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 if that were the case, it wouldn't be game of the year. But I don't know. I yeah. don't know, man. That game just. Uh, it's just. It is it's great. It's a joyous game, and I just I think. I mean, I haven't played Captain Toad yet, but <laughs> as of right now, I think I'm gonna say Donkey Kong. Right on. Yeah. Awesome. Right on. And what do you got to say, ladies? Oh goodness. Uh I'm kinda torn between like as I didn't well first of all I didn't play a whole lot of games. I played a grand total of five new games. So uh <laughs> I uh I'm I'm kinda torn between Alpha Sapphire and Five Nights at Freddy's Two. Both of them I love, but I know like at the same time I know I'm gonna get I'm gonna just keep getting hours out of Alpha Sapphire and uh it's they've added so much more stuff to it. It's just really enjoyable, um, and I love me some Pokemon. So I guess I'm gonna have to go with that. Uh, but oh I'm dear God! At the same the time, I love Five Nights at Freddy's too so much. Um, so <laughs> I don't know. I'm so torn. Uh, but I guess if I had to pick one, I would I would probably go with Alpha Sapphire just for like the replay value that it's got and how many more hours I know I'm gonna keep putting into it. So um, yeah, right on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fair. No, that's totally fair. I I think it's a great yeah. game. I mean, yeah. I'm not I'm playing Omega Ruby, but same thing. Yeah, same difference. <laughs> yeah, we j- when, when, whenever we say one, we mean the set. Yeah, of course. Of course. All right, that just leaves you, Amanda. Nobody knows. Like, either, like, I've played games that, like, I don't feel are worthy, or I just played multiplayer with Dawn for, like, an hour and then haven't touched the game since. Man, Such an exciting year we've had. Amanda's game of the year is Nidhogg. <laughs> 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 she, she hasn't played that game. I didn't before. even play it. Do you need to? <laughs> You've watched us play it. Yeah. Yeah, I dude, everyone needs to play Nidhogg. It's joyous, man. But anyway, anyway, go on, go on. I, I, I don't 
don't know. She really liked uh, stamina mode and Project M 3.5. Don't tell her what she liked. Oh my god, I didn't even play that. <laughs> I just watched. She just watched me play it. <laughs> it's so absurd. <laughs> don't speak for her. Come on. <laughs> I'm just, I was just throwing out something silly. Well, it's not really new, it's just an update to a pre existing mod, mod of a game that came out years ago. Yeah. I don't think that counts as new. Well, Amanda hates video games, clearly. I don't hate video games, I just haven't played a lot this year. Because we've had a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, your your life has been kind of busy this year, but of the games that you've played. Of the games that I've played? Is it Alpha hmm. Sapphire or Smash Bros.? <laughs> It would have to be Alpha Sapphire. I feel like I've gotten more enjoyment out of it than Smash Bros. Like, Smash Bros. is fun to play with people, but single player kind of sucks. Yeah. And like, yeah. with Pokemon, you can play it with other people or by yourself and still, like, have something to do that's not Trophy Rush over and over and over again. Mm. I, yeah, I, I mean, I think that's totally legit. Like I said, I, I think the game is great, so I would not argue with anybody on Oris, their game of the year. I think we all had really good choices for our Gotti, honestly. <laughs> Given that we didn't really play much this year. Yeah, it's. I think what Matt said, at least for me, I think it's true of a lot of us, is that, um, you know, I didn't play very many games this year, but the ones that I did play were very good. Yes. Yeah. So. I, I and a lot of us mostly, have also had, like, sorry. It's mostly in part in, like, because of uh, next, next gen PlayStation 4. Um, and Xbox One, those are the, like the, the new things that you know everybody else is getting. Nobody else, or nobody here, has a PlayStation Four or an Xbox One. Right. Yeah, that's, mm-hmm. that's that's probably true. Like that's probably where the focus of most most gamers, people who identify as gamers, you know, that's mm-hmm. probably where they're headed, and we're not. <laughs> here. Except so. for the fact that uh, even if I if I had a PS Four or an Xbox One right now, I probably wouldn't say any of those games are any good. Yeah, they'd be old games. It'd be fucking right. HD versions of old games. Hey, that would be my first time playing uh, Last of Us. <laughs> okay, like Meta Metacritic's like Game of the Year. They gave it to Smash Bros because like the the ones that are like above uh, Smash Bros were just GTA V and <laughs> The Last of Us Remastered. Like games that already exist are like oh, the Smash Bros is the first or uh, is the best new game, like actual new game. Right. This year. So So it won by default. Yeah, it won by default. I mean, I, that's kind of sad, to be honest. Kind of yeah. telling. Yeah. Yeah. Nintendo People don't want new year. games. They want old games. Just kidding. Well, I, I mean, what are you going to do? Mm-hmm. There's no, There hasn't been a game yet. Like, there's going to be. Like, I'm really going to want to get Kingdom Hearts 3 eventually. But, like... There hasn't been a game yet for PS4 that's made me want to buy it. You know, it's it's gonna happen. Something's gonna something's gonna come out. Mm-hmm. Just not yet. Yeah. Just are you excited for uh, was it Bloodborne? I believe. Oh my gosh, that's. I'll be honest. That's probably the reason I'm gonna wind up getting a PS4 if I ever work up the money for it. Because dear lord, it looks amazing, and I need like I need something to you know get my Dark Souls fix. So. <laughs> I still actually have not played Dark Souls 2 because I keep hearing about uh, a new uh, version of it, an updated version of it. So I'm, you know, I've waited this long. Might as well keep waiting. Um, uh, and I think it's coming out in April. So, uh, and it will also be for the PS3. So there's no eh. point in me getting a PS4 right now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You wait. Yep. I. Right. <laughs> I think we should wrap this up. I think so. We've talked yeah. for quite a while. Yeah, we're getting a little long on the tooth here. Um, sorry oh, but... to, get to answer your question, Josh. No, that's all right. I mean, I don't. I have no idea. Like, yeah, it would be kind of like a crapshoot. Like, what game do you think they're working on, basically? Yeah, I, I, I'm Mega Man. just bad at like predicting that stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so I can make a man game. Like, I, I I keep bringing that up, and you know why? Because like it's not gonna happen. Well. Why else would Capcom be sitting on Mega Man but still pushing Mega Man? 
money. Mm. The money. Easy money. Well, I just, I just think that uh, they're, you... they're waiting waiting on a dev to finish the current game they're working on, and there's a certain dev that uh, likes to revive franchises. That died long ago. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that whole one yep. time he did it. <laughs> I what? <laughs> Get it, Chris? Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Well, well, we're we gonna do, it, do again. it again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> do it all again. <laughs> I would love it. I would absolutely love it, but don't get your hopes up. Is all I'm saying. No, it's true. Let but... it be a pleasant surprise if it happens. Yeah. Don't expect it. Yeah. Well, Nintendo's pushing Mega Man a lot, so they I'm are. Hoping for it. Don't hope for it. How for it? <laughs> all right. Give well... me the stress ball so I can throw it at you. We'll find, <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> Sorry, you two are precious. Okay. <laughs> like I kind of think they're working on a um, yeah, what the hell, Animal Crossing game. You guys don't care about uh, Majora's Mask 3D? I'm super fucking excited for that game. Are you kidding me? Yeah. <laughs> I'm so happy. It's, it's just that you know, like I I love that game. It's the port is gonna be amazing. It's just that when we when Matt asked like, what are you most excited for? That's not it because I know it's going to be good. Like I'm more excited to see something that I, you know, I have no yeah. like preconceptions of. Or, well, I mean, I do. Like I'm excited for Splatoon and Rainbow Curse, but like, I'm the reason I'm more excited for those is because I have no idea what they might do. You know, like Majora's Mask, I know is going to melt my face off. So. <laughs> you know the game and probably destroy the world. Yeah. <laughs> I'm super stoked about Majora's Mask, but I'm also I'm more excited to see what new stuff is gonna is gonna come up. So yeah. Oh, pardon me. All right, I think oh, that's well, it. Yeah. If, you, if you've listened this far, thank you. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> we appreciate you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for listening to us talk. Yet uh, another year has stuff. gone by without a Ditto. Yeah, it's gonna be this next year for us. It's gonna be. Our fifth year on YouTube. Yeah. So, yeah, lots of exciting I, stuff is happening in like the first month of the year. Yeah, Matt's getting married next month. I am. That's very exciting. Gonna have a lot of new content because we're gonna be like together playing games. So, that's gonna be great. So, you know, stay tuned. Whether you're new or whether you've been with us for five years, I hope you stick around. Yeah. You're getting a new member. How did you forget? That's not... The baby can't be in videos. <laughs> the baby's gonna be in videos whether you like it or not. Unless I just don't show up to anything anymore. That's that's mama's call. Well, I, I did, just say, like... I didn't mean don't you... I didn't, okay, I didn't mean that you can't bring the baby, obviously. I just meant, like, it's not gonna have insightful commentary on Pokemon <laughs> Crystal. Are you sure about that? Yeah. Pokemon Crystal's already <laughs> over. Well, it's, then it's definitely not going to have insightful commentary on it. <laughs> okay. well, we should oh, play uh, Yoshi's <laughs> Island. And then you'd be like, Wah. And then Mac would be like, yeah. <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't stand any of you. Okay. <laughs> I can't have tears in my eyes. <laughs> it's going to be a big, next, big year next year. All right. Yeah. I'm Get ready. Being loud. I'm being yelled at for being too loud, so let's wrap this up. Get ready. Prepare, prepare Get ready all your it. butts. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next year. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Bye.